us on your wrist plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plaintiff Jane, and we've got some syrup to get into. Thank you so much for being here this evening, okay? It's a little after 11 o'clock in the night. So, so let's hit thumbs up on the bus. Let's talk about some things, okay? We're talking about Kevin Samuels. Yes, honestly, all of us, we're tired of hearing about him. We're tired of hearing about Kevin Samuels, are we not? Are we not tired of hearing about Kevin Samuels? Yes, but there is still a conversation to be had and me being a person who just so happens to be an entertainment journalist who is reporting on this. My subscribers and my viewers have questions. I don't mind being nosy and digging in there. Listen, I'm not, not to say I'm, I'm not looking for justice, but there is a, a layered discussion to be had. And I'm wondering why Oprah, I'm wondering why Gail King, I'm wondering why R. Kelly, I'm wondering why Jerry Springer, I'm wondering why all these people are being brought into the discussion. And I want to talk about it and see if any of you all can provide clarity, some insight. And there's just a lot. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. And listen, I think that with Kevin Samuels passing me, I'm not celebrating his passing, right? But I'm also not shedding a tear or lending any of my, my passion, care, or concern to memorializing him. I'm just not. Um, and I think that when I hear a lot of uh, people, right, because it's not just men, there are some women, believe it or not, uh, talk about people celebrating his death. I really don't see a lot of people celebrating. I see a lot of people just not giving a fuck. I just see them not caring. And that bothers people for some reason. And I learned that during the Christian Toby Obam Selly time. Um, it wasn't a celebration. We didn't even know that man to celebrate. We just knew enough not to lift a finger to care as Black women uh, about that situation, right? So what I've noticed, my observation is that there have been some dangerous, and we're going to get into a lot of receipts, some proof, some clips. We're going to get into some of the dangerous leftover thoughts of Kevin Samuels following because the torch is still being carried. He's not here. But them beliefs and dare I say these men weren't as bold, as fierce um, and willing to speak out in the way that they are now when he was here because they were hiding behind and depending upon him to batter and be condescending towards black women. Right. The same way a lot of tax toxic black men who share the mentality of the toxic rappers and the TIs and so on and so forth. They hide behind these different people with power, voice, or influence in the entertainment industry, period, whether it be rap, whether it be YouTube, commentary, whatever. Um, th there are a lot of dangerous leftover thoughts that are lingering as it pertains to Kevin Samuels. I want to talk about and really examine those. And then we're going to get into dissecting the 911 call. Listen, I, when I listen to the 911 call, honestly, I heard it in black and white, right? And I'm not talking about literally, I'm talking about figuratively. But there were a lot of other thoughts that people had about it and, and you know, different you know, conspiracies or perspectives, right? Everyone is kind of has a different angle when it comes to that 911 call. So I want to open the phone lines and hear from you all. I'll let you know how I feel about the 911 call a little bit later on. Y'all know I uploaded the 911 call earlier today and I uploaded the full thing, which was about, I want to say about like nine minutes long. What you got from TMZ was a minute and 28 seconds or something like that. You got the full thing over here. So if you're not already subscribed and if you really want to make sure you are down with everything that pertains to black media, you definitely want to make sure you at least consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And I know you already hit thumbs up because I know you don't got time for me to be getting physical with you, right? So we're going to dissect the 911 call, talk about and really explore the dangerous leftover thoughts and what black men are planning to do if black women don't subscribe even in death to Kevin Samuel's philosophies. And then we're going to talk about how or why, or try to make sense, right. Of how Oprah or Kelly Gale King, Jerry Springer, even Mari is getting dragged into the discussion of Kevin Samuel's. We know Oprah got pulled into the discussion when I opened up the phone lines the, uh, the other evening. Right. Um, and it was a very interesting call talking to some of Samuel, uh, Kevin Samuel's, you know, followers and all that other stuff. Right. So 
Listen, all of you all in the live chat, shout out to each and every one of you. That means you're on the bus, okay? If you're watching the replay, that means you're chasing the bus, and that's okay. But even if you're chasing the bus, you need to still pay your fare and hit thumbs up. So listen, check in on your mental health. You ain't got no business dibbling and dabbling into all of these conspiracies and polarizing opinions as it pertains to the untimely death of Kevin Samuels, unless you've been checked in on your own spiritual warfare and you didn't handle what's going on in your world, okay? <laughs> so click away if you need to check in on yourself. Let's get into this intro. Let's come right back and let's just get into it, okay? The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black, and she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? <laughs> And we're back. So let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we not? So um, look, before I get into breaking down today's topic and viral event, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. And shout out to the couple of people who joined the channel on your way in. What did the counselor's kitchen say? 911 call was given. Amber heard my dog stepped on a beat. You know what? I can't with you. Uh, you know what I really want to start out with? I want to start out with one of the most telling things about Kevin Samuel, because I've noticed that some of his followers, they're glad to say, oh, well, every now and then he told the truth. He put out some trash, but every now and then he was right. I think he was so necessary for the culture. And I think the leftover, right, like what we have left and what these men are running with, the rhetoric, the behaviors that they're running with is far more harmful than anything positive he could have brought to the table. And a broken clock is wrong two times a day, right? So do I need all of my broken watches with the dead batteries? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, so I think that this clip that I'm about to play right here, and I want to give you a trigger warning, right? Because this is about uh, a parent who is instructed by Kevin Samuels and um, spoken to in such a way where she is uh, told to not believe her child if her child was to approach her and tell her that a man in the house, whether it be the biological father or the stepfather or just the man that the woman is dating, telling her to not care and to assume that the child is lying and take the man's side automatically. And in the words of Kevin Samuels, you can't make this shit up. You really can't. Let's take a look and we'll be right back. Why Why would you not question your child? Why would you not question your child? Why would you not just say, girl, whatever, that's your daddy. 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 Yeah. And see, this is the thing. He frames the question at first, what if the guy that you're dating... What if your child tells you that he is giving her strange looks when she's getting out of the shower? He shuns her for that. You know, he's being condescending. And then he goes on to, well, what if it's the biological father that the child is choosing? And why wouldn't you just say, oh, girl, that's your daddy. I don't care who it is that my child is telling me. It's making them feel uncomfortable in a sexual way. Or there's some reckless eyeballing. Go Google that if you haven't already, if you don't know what that is, Right. Why would you tell somebody, why would you just shut it off based on as if family members don't cause any sort of sexual misconduct? Mm. Why, why would you not question your child? Why would you not question your child? Why would you not just say, girl, whatever, that's your daddy. 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 Yeah. Children lie. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Children lie. Children lie. Children lie. Nasty. You're not getting back to the child's father. How do you think you can make your asset to the, how do you think you can make your child an asset to the kind of man you want to marry? How can I make my child an asset? So the kind of man you would want to marry? Um, I would have to, I feel like I would have to train her to be 
and I said, as in get her ready for life. Because the bigger question is, why am I focused on raising my child, dating a man, and then also strategizing how my child can be an asset? That's like making, uh, there's so many comparisons I can bring, but why would the man feel like, well, well how this child going to benefit? Because some men feel like, well, you can be an asset and, and then sexualize your child because that's a bonus for them. This is trifling what he got going on right here. And this is the result of a man who realizes, y'all saw the video I uploaded a while ago where he admitted before he started bashing black women, oh, if I was to bash black women all day, my likes, views, and my visibility would, would skyrocket and go all the way up. Well, I guess keeping it real with men about themselves, it didn't really pay off. So then you moved on to bashing black women. And any way you could make the black woman look or feel like sh or send her on a guilt trip for having a maternal instinct to protect their child, which they are just engineered to have. It's not even that they should. They're engineered and programmed to do that. You finna make her look like, make a woman look like trash for believing their child when their child is informing them that a man, a grown man has been inappropriate to them. Whether it was the touch or the feel or something leading up to the worst thing that could happen. You're, in, you're making a woman feel, and this is what happens when you realize my audience wants something I need to deliver it by any means necessary. Kevin was really grasping at straws and pulling this type of shit out his ass because it's like, how can I please these men that keep me here? I know a lot of people say, oh, women made him popular. And I think that women's outrage made him popular. I think that there was a small percentage of women that called in who were gluttons for punishment, pick me's, right? But ultimately it was men who really enjoyed hearing a woman be talked about and talk to and criticize beyond measure that kept this man going. And every day he woke up, he tried to figure out how can I fill this void in a way that I haven't already. Aha, uh -huh, I got it. Mothers are always raising children. Let's talk to black women like they shouldn't be believing their kids and making it all about the man. Let's let's just keep listening though. Life in general. Put her in classes, make sure she's smart, make sure she's not, you know, put in that time to make her a better, a better person. Correct? Okay. Yes. Am I right? No, I'm, uh, the question is how to make some, your child an asset to that man. That makes her, that makes her an okay person, but how, how? How can you adopt? And this is a question all, all women are going to have to answer for themselves. So if the if the child isn't an asset for you, it, it just makes the child an okay person. Why are you, the way that you grade women on a numerical scale is already trash in and of itself. You ask two questions and you drop a number. But if the child isn't an asset to you, how is a child supposed to live up to being an asset for an adult? How? It's giving misogynistic slavery. To, it's, it's giving all types of creep vibes. It's giving a little bit of pedophilia to me too. How are my children benefiting you as my, as my husband? I never thought about that. Well, and that's the what, what would you suggest? I'm just wondering because I... Um, it, I would say it's going to be extremely difficult. But what I would suggest is women who actually think about it from the man's side, understanding that my child today is a liability because it costs. So number one, um, is she well-mannered, well-behaved, smart, taking care? Does she understand? And do I really believe that you're going to come second to my husband? Is my husband going to come first? Or is it and this is him preaching to a black mother that the man should come before the child. Don't get me wrong. Like, we're not talking about one of these conversations that's about how, who do you feed first? Is it the kid or is it the husband or the man of the house? That's a whole nother conversation. And, and that's really all about a person's principle. But we're talking about in, in terms of prioritization. And, and like in real life, not just who's going to take the first bite of food at the table. He is training black, trying to train and preaching to black women that if you go out here and you find a man that's not your child's father, or even if it, 
that the man comes first and your child comes second. You're supposed to throw away your maternity. You're supposed to submit that much to this alleged high value man who died broke in an apartment that wasn't even in his own name and put your child second to him. Believe that everything your child says is a lie and everything the man says is gospel. Talking about, oh, kids lie. Grown, dusty ass men who are using you for shelter lie too. This is dangerous, the type of stuff that he infused into these black men. And now they're even more emboldened and feeling like they need to keep Kevin Samuel's spirit, the legacy, they call it. What legacy? Like, what are you talking about? They need to memorialize him this way. And so they're being louder and prouder about it. This is sick. This is sick. There's no other way to describe it. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. We're a package deal. If you're a package deal, that's no deal. I'll be honest, it's a package deal. That's no deal because let's say you and I were to get married. You got a daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we have two kids together mm -hmm. and your child is five. So 10 years from now, your daughter comes home and says, Kevin touched and looked at me getting out of the shower. What happens next? The relationship would have to end. Huh? That's not something the relationship would end immediately. Because because your daughter said I looked at her getting out of the shower. Kevin touched and looked at me getting out of the shower. Kevin touched and looked at me getting out of the shower. So that means I should never listen to it. I said, means I should avoid women like you because off the rip, your desire to defend your child blew up two. I'm you got two. Wait a minute, buddy. Looked at me getting out of the shower. So that means I should never listen to it. I said, means I should avoid women like you. No, it means she should avoid men like you. If you want to call it avoiding women, if a woman telling you, I prioritize my child over you because I don't know you. I've known this child long that I've known you. My maternal instinct is what it is. You're talking about, I should avoid you. You know what this is all about? People like Kevin Samuels, he had power. That's the one thing you got to admit, regardless of if you feel like he was an asshole, if you feel like he was all anything but a child of God, he did have power, but he abused that power in everything that Kevin Samuels stood for in everything that Kevin Samuels did. He was in an attempt to dismantle black women's boundaries and their standards. That's what it, and it's, even when it comes to the kids. I could even understand it if you were trying to dismantle someone's boundaries and standards as it pertains to anything outside of that child because it allows them to be more lenient for you. It allows you to freely walk all over them so that you can have your way. But for you to dismantle someone's boundaries and standards as it pertains to protecting their child, use a sick, use a sick Negro. You're sick. I get it. You want to walk all over the woman because you feel like the black woman ain't submissive enough for you, especially the educated and financially independent women. You can't just come up to them with any old goddamn thing. That's why you like to have women who are less educated, dependent on you. You pay all the bills so that you can, <laughs> you, you can control the whole show. But the nerve of you to try to strip a, a, a mother, a black woman out of her ability and out of her sanity enough to take away her boundaries and her standards as it pertains to being a mother, you are a real, listen, I don't know what would make people think that when somebody was living here on earth that suddenly when they die, they aren't a piece of shit, right? And this is not me dancing on his grave because I have no desire to go, go near his grave. But the conversation is the conversation. This is a trending topic. And a lot of people tend to be tagging me in things or, or, or bringing Oprah into it or bringing all of these different, it, it, it's not making sense. He's a sick Negro, you're sick. This is a sick Negro. Because off the rip, your desire to defend your child blew up. Two, I'm, you got two of my kids. And off rip, your protective instinct says everything, including those other two kids. Mm -hmm.
Do you? Mm-hmm. No, you said the relationship would have to end. So what would I you mean, tell what would you tell what would you tell our children? That's a tough situation. No, you said the relationship would have to end. So it, I mean, it would have to end because but, but what I, would I you tell to any of my kids? If I had three kids, one by someone else and two by my my But what I'm telling you what, what I'm saying is what we tell our two children. It comes to a situation and we have to part ways. You can get the fuck out. You can get the fuck out. Because mm, I'm not the one paying the bills. No, you know, because you're not taking my kids. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I mean. Any way to attain leverage? How dare you say that because she believes that you victimized her child? That now she got to get the fuck. It, it's not even to say, we're going to part ways and this relationship is over. You took it a step further to say, no, you're going to get the fuck out to, to just leverage that control over her mind. Because if, if, if she really subscribed to things like that, like she's not working in, in her own logic. She's working based off of what you've installed in her mind to abandon everything, all of her maternal instincts. So you then say, well, if, if you're going to believe her over me, you got to get the, who likes to hear, get the fuck out. Especially we talking about this woman literally said, oh, because I don't pay the bills, I got to get out. That's why y'all want women who depend on you financially. And don't let her have more education and be able to talk circles around you. Y'all get so offended by that to the point where y'all want to put your hands on women who can talk circles around you. Ask me how I know. That's why the black men don't cheat. Save that shit. And it's, it's not even about the cheat. It's about the blanketed statement. Stop pretending like there aren't issues that need to be tended to within this community. Because if you're going to not deny that a problem exists, then we will never be able to reach the solution. The war, black men and, and black women are going against each other all the time. Absolutely. They're in denial about a lot of things that they do and a lot of things that they cause. And then when we react, they act like the reaction is some sort of isolated incident. And it's not. It's not. You are trying to punish a woman, right? And, and any person is going to avoid being told to get the F out if there's somebody that they depend on in order to live for the sake of their livelihood and their kids. Then you're going to tell her she's going to get out and she's not taking your kids. So she's going to be out in the cold and you're going to have a kid that she just believed that you just sexually touched. I know you fucking lying. Where does this, in what universe does this make sense? Kevin didn't even think this through. Kevin's just on live, just how, how can I make this woman feel like shit? See, sometimes with Kevin, some of the shit he says at least makes halfway sense. Because he didn't thought it through, but this is what happens when you realize, listen, all I know that my niggas want to hear is me talking shit to a woman. So any way I can shred through and make her feel like her logic is illogical and make her feel stupid, that's when I'm going to deliver them. And this is bullshit. If, if he believes it, it's even more bullshit. But if not, like what I'm thinking is that you just wanted to serve up your customer something without even double checking it or proofreading it. You didn't give out advice. You were a fucking entertainer, right? You, you, you were not giving relationship advice. You were entertaining a bunch of niggas who loved to hear black women being berated and dragged, period. Y'all act like y'all got too much power. It's not power. I, I'm really, First of all, we not acting like shit. And what's the pro- what, what what's the problem with having enough power to protect my kids? Y'all take everything as a threat. I make too much money, that's power. I got too much education, that's power. I have the natural instinct to protect my kids because I spent nine months with them in my stomach and had to bear them. A connection you will never know anything about because you will never be a woman. You might like men, Kevin. But you will never be a woman. Stop playing with me. Now you're taking my maternal instinct as power. It damn, that makes you feel less than. Mm. That's a fragile ass ego up in there. But okay. Oh, you didn't even at, first off, you didn't even I just said if she said it. You didn't even you didn't even you didn't even question whether or not the claim was there. Mm-hmm. Because that's your child. That's why I'm saying your child can never be an asset to anybody. Ask you to treat your child mm-hmm. like it's biologically mine when you be willing to blow up my biological children's shit or something else. That, and you know kids can say anything. They can. But so you have to men. protect your kids at all costs. Then, then, you got to talk. then no. 
leave. No, no, I switch the situation. If I'm that child. Why are you switching the situation? You're switching the situation so that you can attain more leverage. So now you're switching the situation to what if I was the child that is accusing me of making her feel uncomfortable in a sexual manner? What if I was that child's biological father? What would you say then? I was biological father. And she comes out of the shower and 10 years later, daddy looked at me a certain kind of way. And, and I'm her biological dad. Then what do you say? See, but, but see, but you notice how you couldn't pull rank on me? You couldn't pull that? We got to separate. You couldn't pull rank on me. And first of all, that's the only reason you presented her with that scenario. Secondly, I don't care who you are. I'm a black woman with a big black family. And, and I can honestly say it's never happened to me, but I have cousins and family members and friends who their parents, I even have a male cousin who his mother molested him. Let alone for you to act like it can't happen within your family. It could be your aunt, it could be your uncle, it could be your anybody. The nerve of you to be this fucking ignorant with such a large audience. And the men are wondering why the black women don't have more empathy. Why? We not, what, what are we celebrating? Like I didn't see anybody with pom-poms out here celebrating this man's demise. You just don't see us as sad as you all without your Kitten Hills daddy. Oh, well. The thing about it is, when you die, whatever you left behind, however you acted, however you treated people, that was your eulogy. Don't expect people to get up and lie when it comes to who you were when you were here. You write your eulogy every day with everything you do and how you treat people. And when you die, people are going to do nothing but read it back to you. The couple of people who will lie are the people in your actual funeral who are your family. I've been to funerals with child molesters and shit like that. And the family will get up and find some nice things to say. They're not gonna get up and say this person was a rapist. This person was a this. But don't expect that of strangers of the world, people who you have actually slighted. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not at all. You couldn't pull biological rank. You want to, but you're like, well, damn, it's his, it's his kid, too. It would have to be an end situation as well. And you'd have to get the fuck out. And you'd have to get out. And you'd have to get out. I completely understand that. So it would be, it would be for who? You believe it. This is why you don't deal with women with children because, especially in our community, there is no blending families when this kind of stuff comes up because you single mothers are too used to pulling rank. Okay. This is why you're so, single mothers are potentially so dangerous because mm -hmm. you're not used to having <laughs> to actually split the responsibility. It's Not your me. child. And that's fine. But then if why should any man have to deal with that? Okay. So I feel sorry for you ladies, but this is the positions a lot of women put themselves in and then we're supposed to do what about it? Because if it was biologically my child, you said it would be over. Why, why would you not question your child? Why would you not question your dad? Why would you not just say, girl, whatever, that's your daddy. 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 Yeah, children lie. Men don't. <clears throat> Are you kidding me? Too. Children lie. Children lie. Children lie. Roll us on your wrist or plain giant. Hmm. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. What, what do we have here? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I present 
Kevin Samuels and who he was when he was alive. I'm, I'm trying to go in order, but there are so many thoughts coming to my mind. I, I want to I want to go in order, but my thing is so many of the men are outraged again, right? They're pulling Gail King. They're pulling Oprah. They're pulling R. Kelly. They're pulling Jerry Springer. They're pulling Maury into this conversation. Even T.I. T.I. says that black women are bullying Kevin Samuels in his death. Bullying bullying let me tell you something there are plenty of non-black people when, when people die unfortunately people people like to have conversations about people who die and that's whether it be good or bad when michael jackson died you think people weren't still talking about them allegations at neverland they sure were when elvis presley died you think they weren't talking about him marrying a teenager because we talking about we 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 going to act like it only happens to black men. No. When people die, people start to memorialize people based off of who they were and the rumors that were here. Is it always right? Is it always in good taste? I can honestly say it always is not. However, let's stop acting like Kevin Sam. Oh, y'all treating him worse than no. 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 The days of black women just you know, black people in general, but the days of black people really still loving the oppressor openly and boldly when they're free. Like when you quit a job, you talk shit about that place. When you move out your people's house, you feel free and you talking shit about why you had to leave and why it was so bad. It happens. It happens all the time. Let's Let's stop playing these games. Let's stop playing these games. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat, the Fame Calm Network. Believe your kids no matter what, even if the kid is lying. Clearly, the child needs to be cared for one way or another. Get the man out of your house. He bullied her, bullied her into secondhand guessing, and it's disgusting. I completely and absolutely agree. I agree. I agree. Listen, if you haven't hit thumbs up on this video, you definitely want to hit thumbs up. I'm going to drop the link in a little while. There are a couple more things I want to get into. And then I honestly, I, I need to hear from y'all. I need to hear from y'all. It is really important. I want to get into how these black men, some of them, right? Because some of them are so upset. And I can, I can see it a little bit in my comment section, but more so on social media as a whole. Oh my God, if you just say anything where it's like, I don't feel any type of way about Kevin Samuels. Literally, all you'll say is I don't feel any type of way. They're calling you fat. They're calling you this. Oh, you're triggered. You're a hit dog that hollers. Listen, it's getting really oppy outside. It's getting really dangerous out here. There are some black men, and you can see the watermark on here, right? Paris Milan obviously took these pictures, so shout out to her. However, there is a group, and I did join the group, and I fell down the rabbit hole last night doing some investigations. These men are serious. These men are upset. Their daddy is gone. Gone. And they are mad. They're mad that we aren't helping them be pallbearers and drop flowers and write up their poems to memorialize their dad. They're upset, and they want to cause harm to Black women because of this. Look, I seen this myself. This is not no made up shit. I went and I joined this Facebook group myself just to make sure it was true. Ladies, I'm going to tell you, this is a warning. Be careful talking about Kevin Samuels outside your house, in public, at the Walmart, at the bar, at the Target, at the Five Below. It don't matter what. Do not be talking about Kevin Samuels outside your house, especially if you ain't subscribed to what he believed in because these men are so upset and they're angry and they're looking for a way to let this anger out. Let's take a look. And I've, I've seen some of this behavior for myself in this group last night. Yes, I did. I was shocked. I was appalled. I've been known that the men are not well. Listen, the men are not well. <laughs> the men are unwell. But they really throw it off to the point where they're ready to hurt us and open fire on us because we don't agree with Kevin Samuels, okay? So we can see in this group, this is how I saw to, to, to join the group. Listen, mind your mental health. You might be nosy, but if you can't take a lot of people who think like Kevin Samuels, don't take your ass over there. 
please don't. I, I realized after about 20 or something minutes, I said, let me get out of here. It's a, it's a woman bashing fest. And some of them are really looking to hurt us. Okay. So some person says, right, because all they do is sit and talk about black women who don't agree with Kevin Samuels because obviously we're not doing what we need to do in life. We can't find a man and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, a lot of the women offering their commentary about Kevin Samuels, a lot of us are taken. A lot of us are in relationships. But even if we aren't, that doesn't mean we deserve to be talked to or talked about in this way. Some man starts to say, start destroying black women in person. Another one says, yo, if it's true about Kevin, I'm letting loose on all y'all out here. Another one says, we will gather in solidarity to defend Kevin's legacy he left for us. Shit's about to get real intense. Roy Lee Samuels. These men are serious about hurting us because we don't agree with Kevin, and when I tell you it's real in that group, oh, it's real. They really feel this way. They absolutely really feel this way. So I'm telling you, I, I, I'm not saying don't go out, don't party, don't go to the bar. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is be careful. And if they bring up Kevin Samuels or whatever the case is, and you want to have a good time, if you want to have a good time or enjoy the rest of you or, or whatever, Pretend like you don't know him and say that's sad and, 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 and play dumb. Do not talk about him out here. It, wh whatever it is that you use to protect yourself, whether it be a taser, whether it be mace, whether it be pepper spray, if you have a license to carry, whatever it is, women, be careful. There are so many of the more men that I even imagined. I knew that there were going to be a lot of men upset, but there's a lot more. I, I mean, even text messages coming to my phones about my videos from male friends like, and I'm like, okay, well, you can calm down. I simply don't agree. And you've known me long enough to know when Jane got an opinion, she got an opinion and it don't change because of a text message or a conversation. These men are upset. They, they really are. And you know that at, at, at being in the black community, mental health is something that we don't take serious. It's a mix between us not taking it serious and not having as much access to it. So a lot of us, ain't even got it all upstairs. Don't think for a second that they won't snap on you because you don't think the way that they think. Please be safe out here. Please, 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 please. It's it's really sad. I was really saddened when I saw this and saw how real it was. I said, let me take it a step further, do some research and see if this is real, these screenshots before I bring this to me. I wanted to share it last night, but see, I'm very cautious with not fear mongering. I don't want to share a whole bunch of stuff that is just going to get everyone like, oh my God, let me, I don't, I don't like to do that. And I take fear mongering serious. So if I'm going to give a warning, I need to make sure that the warning is warranted and that it's valid underneath. And boy, oh boy, these men are upset. These little boys are upset. They've lost their mouthpiece to boldly. See, before they wouldn't go out and say the things that Kevin Samuel said. They couldn't even think straight enough to do it. They would just share his videos and repeat what he says. The same way they hide behind all these other toxic, you know, male rappers and the TIs and the babies and the future and, and so on and so forth. So when they lose a mascot, trust and believe there's, there's a lot of red that they see over there. Be careful. Would you believe that <laughs> they gonna cry in the car. <laughs> Would you believe that, right? Because we know with the 911 call, which we're gonna get into in a second. Kevin Samuels wasn't around a black woman when he passed away. When he went on the glory or went on to Satan or do whatever it was, was reincarnated as a rock. We don't know. He was not with a black woman when that happened. How the hell did we get the blame? How did black women get the blame, right? And, and, I, and I'm seeing this all throughout this group last night, right? Because you know, when I do my research, I do my research. I'm gonna go dig and I'm gonna bring y'all back a hella receipts. How did we get the blame? The nurse wasn't black. How are black women still somehow being blamed for the demise of Kevin Samuels? 
Let's take a look. Here they say, is it possible that Kevin was assassinated by a conspiring group of black women? I smell foul play. Um, we already knew who the nurse was. We knew she was Latina and or Hawaiian. Even when they had to mix up with Afghan shawty, she was not black. Somehow we still get to blame. Now, mind y'all, y'all, let's, let's zoom into the way they spelt assassinated. Do, do you all see this? And see, they want an uneducated woman and they are uneducated men. Baby, if neither one of us can spell the word ass, how, who's going to help the baby with homework? This ain't even the only time I've seen assassinated spelt wrong in this group. So you mean to tell me that it was a non-black nurse in there, whatever happened, trying to save his life. I know the Kevin Samuels fans feel like she poisoned him. She wasn't even black. And all of a sudden, the black woman paid a non-black woman to go in there and do that. It's black woman's fault. Huh? Huh? Listen, when I tell you the men are not well, I mean that. <laughs> The men are not well. <laughs> They're not well. Something's wrong. Y'all, please get them some milk. Please. <laughs> I want to show y'all another spelling of the word assassinated. They, 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 they in here going hard. Going hard for them, man. Let's, let's, let's look at this one here. Let's look at this. Look at this, look, look at this spelling of assassinated, okay? This person says, something ain't right. I think the Godfather, child, they put Godfather, and they got nerve to capitalize God and Father, and you know they talking about Kevin, right? The nerve. Something ain't right. I think the Godfather may have been assassinated again. Again. <laughs> what? You think that, huh? Assassin? None of y'all can spell assassinated. But y'all in here want a woman that isn't educated because an educated and financially independent woman ain't taking no shit from y'all. And that's why y'all like them less educated, less knowledgeable about the way the world works so that you can pay all the bills and they can be dependent on you and you can control and manipulate them. But baby, if both of y'all are illiterate and stupid and uneducated, who is helping the baby with the homework? What's this? I know you lying you sitting up here trying to make fun of black women on Facebook and you can't even spell what the fuck is wrong with your spell check what kind of device are you on I guarantee you if you was on the computer it would get a red line you want an iPhone you want an Android on your mobile phone it would get a red line you ignoring the red lines what else are you ignoring sir Outside of common sense, I know you can't. I, I know you don't have a high school diploma with this shit going on. Cause I want to talk to the school if so. These be these flavor flavor looking type of niggas. Let me go to the bush. We gonna come back. We gonna get. Cause I'm. Uh, this is too much. Th this this. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. It's not making no sense. None of it is making sense to me. Um, I, I shouldn't be having strokes and things trying to read your post. It's too much. It's too much. I said, I said, Saint netted. Netted. It's just too much going on. Something ain't right. You damn right. Something ain't right. You damn right. It's your mind. It's your spelling. It's not even dyslexia. You ain't even got words. Mm -mm. I don't got time. I don't got time. Let's move on to the next post. That's just out of pocket. So many posts out of pocket. So many, so many screenshots I had to grab y'all. Listen here, y'all. They got him in a lineup with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. <laughs> 
listen, you guys, listen. They said that Kevin Samuels, they said respectfully in that order. You tell me how Kevin Samuels belongs in a sentence or a photo collage with a goddamn Martin Luther King or Malcolm X. You tell me how or why. I'm telling you, the men are not well. <laughs> they are unwell. I told you, I got on Twitter the day after and the men were like, to the legend, Ke legend, are you okay? Legend? A high value man that died in an apartment with a random he had met the day before? A legend who gives long-term marital advice and wasn't even able to take his own advice. A man that told all black women who were 35 and over who weren't yet married that they would die unmarried and alone and he died unmarried and alone. A legend? Listen, these are the men on Facebook. This is this is why I don't be on Facebook. Cause <laughs> out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? Facebook is very annoying. You can catch me on Twitter and you can catch me on Instagram from time to time, but Facebook is very, very annoying. Extremely annoying. Okay, let's move on to the next one. As I stated earlier, T.I. says Kevin Samuels is being bullied. Says y'all ganging up on a dead man. I can't stand it. <sighs> Listen, y'all know I go in on T.I. all the time because he fucking deserves it. He's a misogynist. One of the worst. You literally heckled a woman and called her a bitch because she was funnier than you. She's a comedian who's been putting in time, putting in her dues, putting in the work. You called her a bitch and then said she needs to take her wig off. And then when she brought up the allegations, you decided to play victim when you started the shit. You can't see black women having power in any capacity. And there is power in numbers. And there is power in us collectively not giving a fuck. And you can't stand that, can you, Clifford? Clifford, you can't handle it. Can't handle the truth. Being bullied? Bitch, I ain't never heard of a dead person being bullied. Especially not a dead person that did a lot of fuck shit when they was alive. Have you all ever heard of that figure of speech in a sentence with a dead person? Y'all bullying this dead person. I mean, I get tired of people talking about Michael Jackson's accusations. The feds investigated him for 10 years and found him innocent. Ain't fine shit. Not to mention the people who were accusing, who were the alleged victims of Michael Jackson, came out and admitted that they lied because they were told to lie. The feds investigated that man for 10 years and found nothing. And people still bring up Michael Jackson in that damn Neverland shit. But at, at no point did anybody ever say Michael Jackson is being bullied in his death. Because who the fuck says that? They're simply just running with rumors that existed while he was here. And while a lot of it, most of it has no merit at all. The nerve of you to add the word bullying to a motherfucking person like a Kevin Samuels. You know why? Because you subscribe to Kevin Samuel's philosophies, T.I. You're mediocre ass. Got some nerve. Bullying a dead man by being quiet and not giving a fuck. Again, show me at least 10 places, 10 people. Somebody send me 10 links quickly of people celebrating Kevin Samuel's death. I honestly don't see it and I'm all up and through these social media streets, I do not see celebration. I see people capitalizing off of his name while he's gone 
and running back his grievances while he's gone. But I do not see nobody with pom-poms and holding Kevin Samuels' dead parties. I don't see it. I don't see the celebration. I see people being very critical of him. You know why? Because he was very fucking critical of the black woman. To a fault. To the point where he wanted to be condescending. What the fuck would make you think that you've given out all that energy that even in death, you wouldn't get it back? T.I. needs some fucking help. He needs some help. Mental illness. <laughs> Mental illness. <laughs> Mental illness. Okay. Thank you, Call Your TV, for the 999 super chat. Said y'all better get them likes up. Y'all, y'all better get them daggone likes up. It's almost 200 of us here, and I ain't even done yet. We ain't even went over to Twitter yet and saw how the men try to drag Oprah and R. Kelly and everybody else into it. So let's continue with the receipts that we have. As I took my deep dive into this Facebook group, child, toxic, toxic, I'm telling you, mind your mental health, don't go there. Just take my receipts and go on about your business. Here go this person in the Kevin Samuels Reloaded group says, I see a lot of lonely mothers at restaurants and bars living the best lonely life. Laughing emoji. Spending child support money, but we ain't shit. I mean, it's Mother's Day and do you got a mom? I, I don't understand why you would need to be spreading this type of energy. This is the type of stuff that's really going to take over. We have to really be concerned about what's coming next. What's coming next? Because with Kevin Samuels leaving, these men are trying to keep him alive. And I fear it's worse. Kevin Samuels had a lot of power. And he abused that power. And what's coming next is who's going to take the throne? You have a lot of men who want to have his mentality and, and do share his philosophies. They are anxious to get out there and get some relevancy by keeping a little bit of the spirit of what Kevin spewed alive. The, the men with microphone academic had already been out of control. Case in point, fresh and fit. It was already out of control. All Kevin Samuels had was a camera and a microphone like this. Anybody can get a camera and a microphone. And it don't have to be an $800 camera and a $1,000 microphone. It don't. Some people will go viral with just their phones. These men, the, the venom is going to increase. We have to be really worried about how we protect ourselves and how much attention we give these men who are trying to fill Kevin Samuel's footsteps now that he's not here anymore. The hate is going to increase. The hate has already been here for black women. But trust and believe it is going to grow exponentially right now. Women, we are going to, black women, we are going to have to do so much to mind our mental peace. I would even say that if you're a content creator, and even if you're not, don't react. Don't put the, the names of these men in your titles as they continue to come about and react to their stuff. Kevin, that is how Kevin got his rise to fame is off of outrage. Outrage is currency in today's society. I tell y'all this in basically every video. Outrage is currency. And the, you, you don't have to be liked. You simply have to know how to outrage people. These men are going to continue to carry the torch. Let's get into the next screenshot, right? It says, being a single mom is definitely a choice a lot of our Black sisters make. Not a choice. Every single mom is not a single mom by choice. The ignorance that is spewed, the way that Kevin Samuels has emboldened these weak ass niggas to be louder with their weak ass shit is the problem. There are more Kevin Samuels fans than there were Kevin Samuels. And everybody's gonna be racing to replace them. It's really just sick. It's really just sick. Let's get into the next receipt that we have. It 
says, if you critique them, talking about black women, right? Because this is a group that's dedicated towards this is a group that's dedicated towards talking shit about black women. How do we know? You go into the group and you see them use a basic word like them and you already know who they're talking about. This is These are some of the underlying clues that you can see. Kevin Samuels made a safe space and made it pop, more popular. It was already popular to talk shit about black women. How is it that you go into a group like this and, and all they can say is them and, and people already know who they're talking mess about? If you critique them, you're bashing. If you don't kiss their ass, you hate them. If you're not deceived by sex, you're gay. And again, we get into these illiterate ass niggas. What is this? What's this? Because if you're speaking about being deceived by sex and saying you're gay, this is you are. <laughs> That's Y-O-U apostrophe R E. See, y'all can't even, y'all are illiterate. Are y'all the ones helping the kids with the homework? Because this is very fucking concerning. If so, very concerning. Beyond concerning. Y'all men are sick. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna wear me out. It's a hot mess. And, and I'm telling you that that clip right there. With Sister Caldwell, I'm sorry, Andrew Caldwell. Her don't like being called sister, but we all know what it's giving. We know what it's giving. Y'all not finna wear me out. That's the last thing he says in this clip. That's what us as black women need to keep in mind. As these men with microphones who are becoming popular off of degrading us and talking crap about us because it's entertainment, Stop letting them do it. I need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna wear me out. You heard him say? See, Andrew is, is one of them broken clock. <laughs> Andrew writes two times a day. You ain't finna wear me out. Don't let Kevin Samuels or his people wear you out. Focus on something that makes you feel better, that makes you happier, all right? Here's another post. Here's another post from that group. Let's see what they're saying. Why is it that black gay queens don't even... Hmm, oh, okay. Why is it that black gay queens don't even want black women? Ciao. I think you got pictures of people who are part of the LGBTQ community. So y'all decided to find black women who are part of the community, the ones who are divesting and saying that they don't even like black women. How is like how? That serving Kevin Samuels in his life, like y'all, it's it's just wild to me. The men are not well. They're not well. Something's wrong. That y'all think that this is helping Kevin Samuels look better somehow? Talking about black women who decide to you know, who are part of the LGBTQ community who decide to date outside their race somehow that makes Kevin Samuels look like a better um, self proclaimed guru gu guru. That's what it is. It's weird. It's, it's, it's beyond weird to me. Now we need to get over to Twitter. And this is the part that really, Lord have mercy. <sighs> Getting over to Twitter is a trip because um, Twitter is the wild, wild west. Listen, I, I, I swim in Twitter all day long. But bringing y'all to Twitter is like, I'm like, are my, are my people ready? Because Twitter is literally like the wild, wild west. People be saying and doing anything. The reaches are far more. I think that there are more reaches on Twitter than any other social media site. Battle me if you want to on that. Debate me if you want to on that, right? 
we're going to get into now how Oprah, how Jerry Springer, how R. Kelly, how Mari, how all of them got dragged into the conversation about Kevin Samuels. How is that possible? How is that possible? Now, listen, we're going to take a stroll over here to Twitter, okay? This is it's kind of like a social media stroll, one of them SMS series that I do up over here. Listen, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, you definitely need to do so because I will kick you off my bus. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. A lot of y'all, y'all have already been here for 50 plus minutes. Hit that button so that you can stay up to date and in the know with the best breaking black news and celebrity updates. And let's continue to get into this stuff. And thank you all for your support. I see you got a couple of um, cash apps that came through, but I don't want to interrupt what my phone has going on. But thank you to the people who have joined the membership as well. I do know I missed one person who joined the membership. So thank you all so much for that. Okay, so let me shout this person out. According to April. Okay, thank you so much for joining the membership. I appreciate that. That's a really unique way to spell April too. All right, so let's get right over here to Twitter and see what they are talking about. Lord have mercy, it's always a riot over here. Always a riot. So here's this page, it says, I think that this sister speaks for millions of black men when she called out black women celebrating the death of Kevin Samuels. It gave comfort to white supremacists to target black men in life and in death. Do not forget they did it to Kobe Bryant too. Again, this term legend, in the sentence with Kevin Samuels is sending me, okay? It's sending me. This is a man who realized where the views, where the visibility lied within dragging black women. He admitted it himself before he started to do it, and then he did it, rose to the top, and never looked back. So calling him a legend for realizing that he's able to capitalize off of degrading black women, please stop playing with me. But let's get into this. what, what this woman has to say. And then I want to hear from y'all. This is the point. Like this, this is a big thing that we have. To, we, this is the point. Like this, this is a big thing that we have to like kind of understand as people. We don't. We shouldn't behave and base our behavior on the way that white people views us because that's out. That's out. It's, it's it's incredibly detrimental for us to base how we move on what white people think, right? But at the same time, when we as a people especially the women are collectively rejoicing at the death of a black man. It kind of shows the whole rest of the world. What's an acceptable way to treat our men. You understand me? This is the reason why our legends can pass away and white people and news outlets go and slander them immediately because they know that our men are not going to have the protection of their own people to protect their legacy even after they passed away. Case in point, Kobe Bryant passed away. It was terrible, right? Terrible, shocked the world. Before the day is even over, before the news has really gotten out, we already have white women bringing up allegations against him, bringing up stuff that happened in the past that shouldn't even be talked about at this time, at a very sensitive time. We have people bringing this stuff up and they are able to comfortably bring that kind of stuff up. They're able to talk about these things and kill our men even after they're dead because we show them how we should be treated as a people. Y'all know I have a great amount of clips loaded in to describe people, to describe their actions. Um, and you know, a sick Negro isn't, it's not just a man, a sick Negro can definitely be, um, a woman. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a sick Negro. She's sick. She's sick. Um, pick Misha. I hope you get chose. I hope you get chose. I really do. But first, I wish she Won't you be quiet, please. Honestly, because you know, when have non-black people ever needed permission to disrespect us? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
people like this getting mad at black women because they simply don't give a fuck about a man that constantly shamed and degraded them. When have white people needed our permission to treat us like shit? This logic has a million and 95 holes in it. But you can tell that a woman like this has so much support around her because there are so many men who share this, this way of thinking. So it's like a safe haven. Instead of you being a black woman who actually gives a fuck about black women in, in, in its entirety and having to deal with men kind of shunning you away, like by default, if, if, if I was to tomorrow switch over to this way of thinking and speaking up about it, you know how many black men would gather around me and put me on a pedestal? Countless, especially because they're in desperate need of a spokesperson and for someone to articulate the worth of Kevin Samuels because they can't very much easily do it. And I mean, I'm sorry to say this woman can't very much easily do it as well. I mean, she's added a little supremacy spice into this. Oh, the white people are going to treat us worse because y'all are talking about what Kevin Samuels really did when he was here. The white people are going to treat us worse because we're holding Kevin accountable, baby. Kevin is still a nigga at the end of the day. And he will get nigga treatment by white supremacy and any other system that was designed to keep him in his place and oppressed, according to them. They don't need our green light in order to do that. Sweetie, what is wrong with you? Are you are you raising kids? All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Um and, and, and again, showing them how to treat our legend our legends. It's this word legend always being associated with him. It's, stop the cat. What, what do the young kids say nowadays? That ain't P. It ain't P. Stop calling him a legend because it's not P. That's not P. It's not. <laughs> he was a nigga with a camera and a grudge against black women. Period, point blank. In an attempt to dismantle black women's boundaries and standards. Notice how she put the blame on black women. The blame is on black women because we don't care. And again, there is not a whole bunch of people out here celebrating. Are there some women out here who are angry, who are like, mm, oh, well, deal with it. Yeah, but that's not a celebration. It's a, it's, it's a mark. It's a remark that is full of a woman being disgruntled. And he disgruntled a lot of black women. Deal with it. I can't, the world's not a better place without Kevin Samuel. So what is there for us to celebrate? If anything, it's a little bit worse without him here. Cause now you got everybody trying so hard to keep him alive and they in overdrive right now spewing this mess. So there's really nothing for us to celebrate. That's a bullshit ass argument to sit and chastise people who simply just don't give a fuck. People who want to sit it out. Stop it. Stop it. This must be somebody that is surrounded by beta males. She sounds like one of them. Her ignorance, her ignorance, her ignorance is showing. <laughs> you know, first they say that we should disregard white people's opinions and then proceed to say that we should move in a certain way in order to garner a more favorable opinion from white people. Talk about tap dancing. Talk about cooning. You know, Terry Cruises, the Terry Cruises of the world coming many different colors, shapes, sizes, genders. Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. And, and it's very odd when y'all place the importance of a male's blackness over the accountability of his action. And then y'all only seem to give this kind of grace to black males. Why is that? Why is it that black males are given this, this type of grace? Black women want to come out and, and just take up for the black man who is dead wrong. Dead wrong. You don't see that type of stuff happening for black women. Why is it that this type of grace? <laughs> what, what, why? Why? Mm, make it make sense. Somebody make it make sense. Um, 
Kevin Samuels absolutely would have called her basic average and encouraged her partner to slap her. But listen, that is a whole nother situation. Uh, I guess we'll get, where should we start? I guess we'll start with how R. Kelly got dragged into the conversation, shall we? So much, so much, so much. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is as I'm pulling up these tweets, I'll read through some of these tweets and I'm going to drop the link for um, folks who want to call in, okay? Um, so I'll drop the link. You all can get backstage if you would like to. Um, and just make sure you have everything turned down in the background. All right, let's start. All right. I was disappointed in, um, in D.L. Hughley, all right, because D.L. Hughley is, he's an independent thinker for sure. That's what I can say. He doesn't always have the popular opinion or what I would even consider to be the general consensus among Black people. He definitely thinks for himself, and I respect that of him. But this was pretty disappointing because why, what does R. Kelly have to do with any of this? D.L. Hughley says, it's sad that R. Kelly will garner condolences that Kevin Samuel um, would get warmer condolences than Kevin Samuels is getting. Rest in peace. Team DL. I don't know what R. Kelly has to do with this. Like, why would you need to bring up a pedophile? I guess maybe you're trying to compare pedophilia to a toxic entertainer. But the difference is R. Kelly's still alive. Kevin Samuels is not. This is apples to oranges. This is an entertainer who like leave R. Kelly out of this. Like that, like Kevin Samuels fans are grasping at straws and they're using any example, Oprah, Gail King, Jerry Spring, whatever, to garner sympathy to get other people to care. Oh, y'all don't care? Let me throw R. Kelly in this. Let me let me come at y'all this way. He's a pedophile. He would have got more likes. Oh, well, wh whether he would have got more likes or what, he's wrong. Are there still hella people who will support R. Kelly? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. And guess what? especially the women who will still support R. Kelly, ain't shit. That don't mean we need more ain't shit people to suddenly support Kevin Samuels. Is you crazy? We're talking about a man who literally put minors in harm's way for his own sick, sadistic, pedophilic desires. And you're upset that Kevin doesn't have as much support. Kevin doesn't have support because the very group that he talks shit about is the, is the group in power right now. Black women have the power. We have so much power that you men feel outnumbered and y'all are pulling all types of straws to get us to be on your side or to share your point of view. And we don't. And so you bust a pedophile out for what? It's the, both of them are a danger to the black community. Well, if R. Kelly got more support than what Kevin is getting, some of y'all should just give him support because we need to even the scale because why should a pedophile get more support than somebody like Kevin who wasn't? I don't know. Based on that first clip that I played in the beginning of him saying, well, if she tells you that her biological daddy touched her, why wouldn't you just say, that's your daddy, girl. Get out of here with that mess. It seems like he would want to sweep pedophilia under the rug. So what the fuck is you saying, D.L. Hughley? I be wanting to be on your side, D.L., and, and I still want to meet you one day and potentially even interview you. However, we know what happened with your daughter and how you didn't believe her when she was sexually abused. Kevin Samuels preached not believing your daughter when she comes to her mom and tells her that she's sexually abused. There's room for redemption, especially if you will admit what you've done wrong. And, and, and D.L. Hughley, you have definitely admit that you did wrong by not believing your daughter when she was sexually abused because you like the guy who did it. You thought she was lying. And now you're out here trying to gaslight black women 
into supporting a man who supports the very same shit that you had to come to the altar and the microphone to tell the world that you fucked up. I think the fuck not. No. No. Leave the pissy pod piper out of this. He has nothing to do. If you thought that that was helping your case, it made it worse. And, and had this argument came from someone else, it wouldn't have touched home for you. But you bringing up R. Kelly into this situation, it hit close to home for you, D.L. Hughley. Don't do that. Don't do that. I listen to your show every day in the car when I get off work. Don't do that, D.L. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just calling it out. Don't do that. What's next? Let's get into Jerry Springer because how did Jerry Springer get into this conversation? Okay. I saw there was a person that called in, but I was in the middle of getting my point across. So if you wanted to call back in, it was the last person that had joined the membership too. So if you wanted to call back in, I will grab your call if you call back in. Um, let's get into, oh, she's back already. Okay, cool. I'm going to read this tweet and then I'm going to bring you up. Okay. According to April, I think is your name. Okay, so let's get into this page, right? So this person says Jerry Springer has made millions of dollars off of ratchet ass women not knowing who their baby daddies are. But y'all want to attack Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace. But given the same ratchet women much needed relationship advice, never once have I heard you Negroes try to cancel Jerry Springer. They go on to say Jerry Springer was the worst representation for women. He would find some of the worst black women to put on his show. Cheating and lying, disrespectful. And these black men were happy to go on the show. But Kevin Samuels was trying to help some of these, some of them take offense to it. Yeah, so this person, I, I, I really don't think this is an account so every now and then they go, they have a lot of followers, but their English is always so broken. I swear they're not from here. English is not their native language. However, let me tell you the first person, I'm not going in order of how they tweeted. The first person they dragged into it, I, I lied to you not, it was Oprah. And we're going to get to the Oprah tweets in a second. However, bitch, I know you lie. Let me tell you something. I want to call Jerry Springer an equal opportunity showboat but i really feel like jerry springer liked them hillbillies in the trailer park trash more than anything you didn't see black people more than you saw the trailer park trash he fucked with all the poor people but he had he his his favorite was them hillbillies that's who was on there more than anything y'all remember he had them jello matches them wrestling and just wasn't no black Jerry Springer, you cannot say Jerry Springer exploited black people. Jerry Springer was an equal opportunity exploiter. And his favorite was the trailer park. It was. Now, they, as soon as they tweeted this, I said, I, I know they're going to bring Mari into this next. Because Mari, you, you can say that there was more black on that than anything. But even still, y'all are comparing Mari to Kevin Samuel. Y'all are trying so hard to make Kevin Samuels look like a saint that you bringing up Mari. You're not calling out rat for making black women look like crap, right? Bitches and hoes and so. But Mari. Oh, oh, you don't want to call out Future? Oh, because that's because you fuck with his music. You don't want to call out Kodak? No, you fuck with him. NBA Young, oh, no, you fuck with his music. Anybody? Oh, you. What the fuck Jerry Springer got to do with this? Not a damn thing. And in a desperate last minute attempt to make Kevin Samuels look better, you bust out a vintage ass. And see, the thing was, Jerry Springer didn't position himself. He didn't posture himself as a relationship guru. Jerry Springer brought your ass there to make a fool of yourself. And that's all he did. 
And the, not to mention Jerry Springer was predominantly scripted. Some of it was real, but a lot of it was scripted. Those people was getting $500 in a flight in a hotel that night to go on there. Them people was going on there for a check. And like I said, some of it was real, but it was still a scripted television show. Don't you dare think that early in the morning to midday television syndicated is all real. No, they had to make sure it was scripted and produced so that it would be spicy enough to air and get ratings. Jerry Springer, y'all are weak as fuck. Y'all are weak. Hey, hey, according to April, how are you? I'm pretty good in yourself. What are your thoughts? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry. I was about to skip right past that. Okay, so what are your thoughts on Kevin Samuel and all that we've discussed thus far? I think that we should just let them keep coming out so we know who they are. Yeah. I feel like if, if you're dating, you should say, hey, how do you feel about Kevin? And if they say it's so sad, he was a legend, block him. Yeah. I spoke to you last night, by the way. Oh, that was you? I, why yeah, do that I feel was... like your screen name is different? I thought it was... It was. It was said the para-alchemist, but I just changed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just saw a comment you left earlier that said you was too emotional when you called in last night. And honestly, I don't think that you were. I appreciated your passion. And I think that we both handled the conversation very well. I think that we did. I don't want you right. to feel bad about it. It was just so and many points that, that I, missed, I missed out on because I was yeah. upset. Yeah. And, but you know what? I appreciate you calling in and it and it still meant a lot. And I was really thinking about it all day. I was debating uh, uh, taking that video down. Um, but anyway, yeah, you know, don't feel bad. It was it was a passionate discussion. And one thing that I think that black folk can remember when speaking to somebody else in the community, especially I'm a passionate speaker. I know I am. So I don't take offense when I hear emotion behind, um, you right. know, like a voice or delivery. So the thing is, I've been felt this way. I just didn't want to, it's just exhausting. Like, it's so many things that you have to deal with and I got to be the voice of that. But you really did make a big point. Like, somebody has to say something. And to be honest, most of the Black people don't even know we're being blamed for this. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a couple of my friends today. I was like, we need to we need to figure out who can we talk to. Mm -hmm. We got to bridge the gap. Because yeah. I realized you really didn't even understand that it was not a community. I can see why it would look like a sorority. Like people would think like, oh, no. They don't care I mean, about me. you know, for the couple of visible representatives of the LGBT community, you know, I guess they put on a good front to the point where I believed that it was that way. You know, they're, they, they're in the know. They get the checks. Mm hmm. So, yeah, it was I, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to have more discussions. I'm a fall. I'm, I'm not just going to jump out and have a haphazard discussion. Last night was a little bit haphazard. Right. But I was just like, I have a question and I, I have good intention. So hopefully I don't. Um, you know, offend the LGBT community, but I'm like, I, I have this burning question and I want to spark more debate. So I want to do it in a more strategic way, but trust and believe that's not the last time that I'm going to be talking about stuff like that. Um, I have a lot of friends who are part of the community and it's, it's the conversation that I try to have, you know, with them as well. And so the people who are a little lost um, in the conversation last night, we had a show about um, me personally, like I've noticed a pattern in, some of the recent sick pedophile, right? Pedophilia is a sickness. Being attracted and wanting to and actually indulging in underage people, it is a sickness. However, recently I've noticed a, um, a, a common denominator, which is they are using the LGBT community as a shield. Um, we went through several stories and examples last night, um, you know, where kids are exploited and put in harm's way. And I'm just asking the LGBT community an honest question, like, what is the community doing, right? Not the, the person that, that I'm talking to, but just like, what is the community doing in order to um, distinguish themselves from the pedophiles? How are they calling out and making the pedophiles using their labeling, using their community as a safe haven because we are afraid and apprehensive to ask questions to the LGBT community because it's so easy to offend someone 
and then you don't realize what's going on in the schools, what's being snuck into the schools because it's just understood where it's like you don't want to ask the LGBTQ community the wrong question because the LGBTQ community they they get justice before black people get justice when it comes to races. So it was it was a, it was a loaded you know question and curiosity of mine, and I do plan on continuously working out really understanding i'm not attacking i want to know because i'm friends with so many and i know that they're not like that so i just want to know like what are y'all doing or who can i look to right because everyone i ask that question i'm not expecting them to turn around and be some megaphone that calls out the sickos who are using them as a shield but it's like where can i look what platform what person what what are y'all doing to distinguish yourself because the the more and more you look into it it's it, by the time you find out what's been happened, this oh they were running a transgender camp, and eight months later you find out they've been touching somebody or victimizing a seven year old or whatever. Like it's it's weird to me, and I'm like, <laughs> if there's anybody that's more edgy, the LGBT community is very edgy, and they can get away with being more edgy than us hetero, you know, cis hetero folks. So I know that y'all the the community has enough edge and daring willingness to call out the bullshit as pedophilia and the people hiding and, and, and diluting y'all's community. I know that y'all have the ability to call them out, but how, why, and how can I help and be a megaphone as an ally to stop that shit? I care about kids, you know? Well, I know you sparked it. You sparked it in me. I realized it's obviously that I have to speak out. It was something that was on my heart anyway. Ever since I first saw the video, I came across on you because of R. Kelly. And then mm. after the R. Kelly case, I started following. It was one story you did about this woman in Milwaukee, that mother, mm. Mm. that touched me. Because I'm, I'm a runaway. I understand mm. what that's like. So it was tugging at my heartstrings. Like, I need to start speaking out. I can't be quiet if nobody else wants to. And it's hard for me because I'm an actress. I'm in that field. Like, me talking like this can get me not part. Like, I can't get parts. Some people may not want to fool with me. Like, it's a game. It really is that way. Mm -hmm. And if you don't speak the way they want you to speak, you don't get the parts. You don't get the you don't get to be in the club. But maybe I don't want to be in your club. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm really starting to realize. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to speak out because if you don't if you guys really thought we were a group, that was hilarious to me. And it was like, well, why would they think we're not? Look how they're making it seem. Mm hmm. And look, I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to make mistakes even if I got to get called out. There was I, I even have a friend of mine who was like, look, I watched your one video. You know, I just want to tell you night? a couple of things. No, no, no. It was the one I did about Zaya Wade. And it, I think it was right. about my pronouns and the way that I addressed Zaya and Zaya's friend. Um, They they had some feedback for me about... And, and this is a person I'm like, I'm actually friends with. And they were like, what hey, I want to give... Um, you know, I read through it, but honestly, I'm looking forward to, I, I want to make it a video because I, I, I'm, I'm open to getting that sort of feedback on camera to teach others. So like, I'm willing to make mistakes. It's daring. I, there's so many people like heterosexual will sit and have these conversations and they even content creators. And they're like, oh no, I wouldn't say that. Cause I don't want to make the wrong, say the wrong thing. You know, but if everybody's scared to have the conversation, who's going to, you know, so I'm willing to make some mistakes i'm willing to have people come on here and be like listen you went wrong with this this is offensive to this i'm willing to make mistakes or whatever because at some point somebody's got to make some headway to protect the kids and to make sure that this indoctrination doesn't continue to happen so i'm willing to even make some errors and throw myself out there i, I was talking to a homegirl today and she was like basically telling me like she's a part of the community she's like there is no community she was like but jane i'm gonna tell you don't talk about that stuff like you're gonna get caught up somebody's gonna get offended and i'm like girl you're not gonna be able to tell me to stop talking about something because people somebody's are just concerned be that it is gonna go and it's yeah i'm not afraid i know where my heart lies and i know i'm not trying to offend anybody if somebody takes offense oh well i can apologize i'm willing to be coached but it's it's, it's enough of us heterosexual people sitting by and being like well, I'm scared to start the convo. Fuck that. I'm not scared. <laughs> Let's talk. Teach me as I go. Teach me how to be respectable to y'all if there's something that I do that offends y'all. But at the end of the day, these kids are being victimized because there are people hiding under y'all cloaks. And I can, I can see that as an outsider. I'm like, how are y'all going to call these people out? Somebody got to start the convo. 
Well, I don't mind bridging the gap. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have um, to apparently. Yeah, it's 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 got to be done. There's so much to discuss. There's so much to be had. Did you hear the 911 call from Kevin Samuels? Mm, I think I might have tuned in right after it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play I'm it. looking kind of weird. I'm not used to talking in the camera, so. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. You're be. fine. You're fine. I know. I've got okay. so many screens I'm looking at that I don't, I'm not always looking at the camera. I'm looking at my screen on, so I can make sure I got everything going on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the 911 call, the full mm. 911 call. And I want to see what the chat has to say. And I want to hear what you think. I, I I listen to the phone call in black and white. But there are a lot of people who feel like, nah. I mean, and I can also say people got some valid points. But I want to see what you all think. So let's play it. And um, let's see what everybody thinks. Hello, this is the address of your emergency. I really need some. Okay. Okay, okay. Hello, ma'am. Take a deep breath, and what's the address that you're at? I'm not sure. Do you want to take it? Okay. Okay. Give me one second. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Just keep it like... Oh, my God. Hold on. Okay. You need to come to... It's uh, the residence. It's, um... Please, just come past. It's, it's Kevin Daniels. You need to come, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah. ma'am. Take a deep breath. Seven three one. What is the street name? It is two nine seven East Pace Ferry Road Northeast. Okay, is this a house or apartment? Oh my God, I fucking know. It's Kevin Samuels. You don't know if it's a house or apartment? Oh, it's an apartment. Okay, what's the apartment I, number? Mm. I know. I just need to give him 50 yards, please. It's us to bring you an ambulance. Yes. Okay, hold on. Okay, listen, hold on. Let me connect you with the ambulance. Do not hang up. Are you listening? Hold on, ma'am. I have to connect you with the ambulance. It's Kevin fucking Samuel. I understand, but I have to connect you with the ambulance. Are you okay? The ambulance was the actual emergency. Hey, buddy, it's Atlanta. It's going to be 297 East Texas Ferry Road, Northeast. Hello, ma'am. Is this a house, apartment, or a business? It's an apartment. Please just drive to the end. What's the address of the apartment number? 
Did he did he start breathing again, man? No, stop. He said there is no heartbeat and he turned fucking blue. Okay, if there's a defibrillator available, send someone to get it now. Kate, tell me when you have it. I'm just giving him CPR. I'm going to try to open the door. I don't want to stop giving it to him.
And then just to make sure you're doing it right, I'm going to give you the CPR instructions. Listen carefully, and I'm going to tell you how to do chest compression. Make sure he is flat on his back on the floor. Place the heel of your hand on the breastbone and the center of the chest, right between your nipples. Put the other hand on top of that hand. Understand. Up the chest hard and fast, at least five per second and two inches deep. And let the chest come all the way up between pumps. We're going to do this 600 times or until pump can take over. Count out loud, so I can count with you. And we'll do this to support like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, there are so many thoughts to take from that. There are so many. Uh, let me figure out where um, I want to start, and then I want to hear from you, of course, right? Since you're up here with me, get this in the best way. Lord have mercy. Okay, so I'm gonna drop in like a game for anybody who may want to call in. The first thing I'll say is I agree with Elle that this had to be traumatizing for her. Nurses find themselves in stressful situations all the time, but it's entirely different when it's just you and they're in critical condition. I want to agree with that because I know a lot of people felt like she was really, um, you know, frantic to be a nurse. Like she had no right to be in a frizzy because she's a nurse. There's a difference between, for me, this is why I say when I listen to it, I listen to it in black and white, but I do welcome listening to other people's opinion if you, um, you know, had a different opinion, right? I feel like when you're in a hospital and you're surrounded by all this professional equipment and all of your other, you know, coworkers who are also medical, medical staff, it's different. There's a level of comfort there. You have everything you need to possibly save a life. As opposed to being with somebody that it was like a one night stand, even if, you know, I, I know that there is some speculation about, well, it sounds like they might have known each other longer than possible. You know, it's different. And I think that um, I, I saw someone in the comments saying, I know she's wondering why me, why now? Exactly. You could hear, right? <laughs> like you, you could hear in what she was saying that she felt like she was with a celebrity. She's like, listen, y'all, it's Kevin fucking time, y'all. It's Kevin Samuels, for God's sake. As if everybody in the world knows who he is. As if he's a celebrity. This is a man where TMZ didn't even report on him till the next day. And it was late in the next day. It was late in the afternoon. It was almost the evening. Basically, TMZ only reported his death because all of YouTube, all the rest of the internet was just jumping, 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 jumping about it. TMZ is the type, they want to get on the story and they want to get on it quick. TMZ is usually the first, TMZ is known for breaking stories. TMZ didn't want to break this story. They didn't want to be second, third, fourth, fifth, 10th, 11th, 15th. TMZ was literally 5,878th in line to report Kevin Samuel's death only because they had to. She really felt like there was a celebrity dying in her arms and I'm, I'm not making light of anything, right? But you can imagine if there was somebody that you got to know, whether you knew it or they portrayed it to you, like they were so big or you thought that they were a celebrity Jeez. dying in front of you, you would feel some type of, and you could tell by the way she's talking to the staff, like just go to the front desk and tell them it's Kevin Samuel. Or listen, y'all, it's Kevin Samuel. You need to forget all this formality stuff. It's Kevin Samuel. It's not like Kevin Samuels is a name like a Beyonce or a P. Diddy or hell, even a, you know, a Tyrese or The Rock or anything. Like, it's literally Kevin. But she thought that that name held so much weight. I felt like, I feel like even as a nurse, you have the right to have frantic moments. I know that there are some people ripping her to shreds because they feel like she had no right to be that upset because she's a nurse and she's supposed to always be in line when there's a life on the line. And I think that people fail to realize nurses are nurses and I have um, a family member who's a nurse. Nurses are nurses because they care about the existence of life. They care. So you can't think that that care has some sort of permanent off button to the point where they can always be in this business professional mode. Nurses are nurses, but they do still become upset when they see harm or, or, or death or whatever, when, when they see pain or something like that. So, um, that was that, right? I know when I listened to TMZ's version of it, it was like a minute and 28 seconds and it was weird. One voice was louder than the other. It was edited together and it really didn't tell you the story 
it it, it just it seemed manufactured. Um, but I think that, and, and then we have to keep in mind, this isn't a person who's been a nurse all her life. This is a person who just became a nurse in 2020. It's 2022. She's mm. only two, not even three years into being a nurse. So to expect permanent professionalism, to think that she will not ever become worked up or emotional about the situation that's taking place outside of the medical facility that she's familiar with, I think is a little unrealistic. Um, but what do you think? Me? Yeah. <laughs> that just shook me up. Like, that just took me to another place. I don't even yeah. know why we're allowed to hear that. Yeah, like, that someone else was something. saying that too. Yeah. I, I didn't even, like, I could really feel everything that she was going through. Like, that was too much for me. And I don't care nothing about that, man. I feel more mm -hmm. sorry for her and the stuff that she's going through. I don't care anything about Kevin Samuels. Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. I Do you feel like, I know that, that... thought it was kind of funny. Some people felt like if you listen to Around About the Middle when she says something like, think about your mom. Think about your daughter. People felt like based off of that, uh, according to the nurse's admission, right? And this is according to the police report. She said that she had just met him the day before. They had just met 18 hours prior to his death. And some people felt like listening to her mention the mom and the daughter, that they knew each other longer than a one night stand. Because a lot of people kind of- a fan. That's what I was about to say. Because in my opinion, I'm like, listen, to know that he has a daughter, everyone knew he had a daughter because Kevin Samuels had been exposed for not wanting to pay child support. So we been knew he had a child and he had been exposed, you know, based off of that before. And my thing is like, look, when you meet up with somebody, whether they in another state or not, sometimes you've been talking to him for a while. Mm -hmm. It's pillow talking, you know, like back when I was out in the dating world, it's like you be up pillow talking with the person that you're interested in meeting up with one day in person like a lot of times on the phone so i'm like she could have learned that over the phone and not to mention they had met up at a bar when they had met up so it's like that's either something that she already knew as a fan based on pillow talk or what she said she basically only expressed knowledge of him having a mom and having a child that can easily be extracted from a conversation at the bar with somebody you getting to know I think a, a lot of people, y'all might not want to admit it, but a one night stand is a one night stand. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, a nurse shouldn't have a one night stand. But listen, if you meet somebody and you're about to take them home or whatever the case is, it's basic information to kind of, that's basic stuff. I have a daughter. I have a mom. That Those aren't like secrets that you need to go to the CIA to get. Anybody that's had a couple of drinks and even sober people, when you're getting to know somebody on a romantic level, even if it's not romantic, like long-term relationship, if it's just romantic, like I'm trying to fuck, y'all might have a preliminary discussion about how I got a child and a mom that I love. Like that's not difficult to receive. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, they're, they're, what, how do you feel? Do you feel like, did it, did it sound like she knew him longer? Cause there were several people who felt like, mm, sound like she didn't know them longer than a day. That was disturbing. Like, I don't even know what to say. That changed my whole mood. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know, like, that was, we have no business even being privy to, like, we shouldn't even be able to hear that. Like, that's mm -hmm. crazy that I even heard that. Yeah. I feel it, scared for her. They're going to, it, like, you talking about us, they definitely about to try to get her. I mean, I, I understand, and I brought you up that's here, terrible. Koya. Koya, you're up here, so you can hit on me whenever you're ready. But I think that, you know, public record and us having access to... Uh, you know, police dispatch phone calls or body cam, you know, it, it's, you know, especially because Kevin Samuels, he, he wasn't a celebrity, right? If we, we if we going to stick with what we've been saying, like, he's not a celebrity. She expected everybody to know. And it's like, sometimes it's like, they have to have this stuff available for the public to listen to because what type of misconduct? There was one case where a dispatcher hung up on a, a young man who needed help and that young man died because the dispatcher hung up no one would have known if these phone calls these phone calls are up for grabs and, uh, and and available to be purchased and when people purchase them and then they they publish you they publicize them um that is when people are able to pick up on was something done wrong or was it done right so i mean i totally understand that listening to trauma like that it shouldn't be you know like allowed 
But at the same time, you know, public record, especially as it pertains to black people, it's like, and, and there are even some people to that point more who feel like the dispatcher was being so, uh, there's a lot of people in the comments of the video where I uploaded that by itself who feel like the dispatcher didn't care. They felt like she was way too nonchalant. Um, they felt like she should be fired because she just seemed to not care. So I think- um, Don't they gotta be emotionless a little bit though to calm you down? Uh, yeah, I think that's true. And I think that people, you know, that line in between being emotionless and literally like not caring, you know, that line in between is where things get kind of murky. I can hear where they're coming from, but at the same time, I can understand where the dispatcher is coming from too, because you can't just jump into your emotions with the person. Me, I'm too emotional. I couldn't do it. Somebody called yeah, me. I'm a it's a killer chasing me. I've been the strength too. Like I, I ain't gonna be able to keep you calm because I'll be worked up with you. So I couldn't do it. But there are a lot of people coming down at both of the, um, at the dispatchers. It seemed like they were just talking in a monotone voice to keep her calm. If I'm getting hyped with you, I'm going to make the situation worse. That's true. I don't need the job if I'm going to get hyped. Well, I, I was going to say sure. this, y'all. Um, speaking from my friend, you know, we, you know, I'm here in Atlanta and she works at um, the medical centers, you know, here. Um, when we're together, she's ready and springing into action. She's been on the job for about, I think it's three years now as a nurse and she's ready. What I kind of found weird is that she wasn't calling out his heartbeat. So you get what I'm saying? And counting it. As a nurse, you're going to calm down. You're going to listen and you're going to start, you know what I'm saying? Figuring out, um, you know how you count the beats or whatever like that. They can call it out or whatever time it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, usually say a lot of people in my family, they're in the medical industry and they have worked in the ER. Like we've been in situations where like, say one of my family members is turning blue because, you know, they need an EpiPen and all that kind of stuff. They're very calm. They're able to handle situation, even though it's one of us that's going through the situation, they're still able to think through the situation because they're taught to not get frantic. So it was kind of like the way how she was moving, it didn't kind of seem kind of like it kind of it did throw me off that's why i wasn't expecting that because usually your nurse instincts you're gonna kick it there are the philip um and believe in those high-rise apartments um my friend does stay over there on far road there's like defibrillators on the floors but the young lady is kind of weird that she said that she didn't understand like know where she was at she didn't get it because when you go through those um apartments you have to go through they have a bottom floor where you go through Where's the parking garage? You have a key fob where you have to go in and then you go ahead and, you know, they have their private, uh, you know, you go up the elevators and all the other kind of stuff. But it's kind of weird that she didn't know her surroundings. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Um, so that's kind of like, that kind of threw me off. I was like, girl, you don't know where the hell you at. Like, nothing like, you don't know even you drive in the gate. Like, there, what's going on? That kind of was weird. Did you walk in through the street level? Like, that's why I'm kind of like, I, I don't know. That was just weird to me. It was. I'm not sure what's going on with your audio. It sounds like something Isn't might she be from Kansas, though? Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I was about to say. She's, she's not from, from Atlanta. Yeah, she's not from Atlanta. She was just visiting. And we don't know um, how drunk she was when she came there, how, what hour it was, what they was ooh, on. Oh, I didn't think of that one. Why, why would she know where she at? Which is a what night? You just want to be She didn't even, yeah, she didn't even know the apartment number either. Yeah, because nice. usually your friend will text you because you got there some type of way. You know what I'm saying? Either you Uber. You yeah, drunk you leaving the something. bar. <laughs> they was. The streets is talking. The streets talking about a lot, though. I'm, I'm aware of three different conspiracies and some of them. I'm waiting for the autopsy. Uh, right. That's what I'm waiting for. These, these conspiracies. The some of them, they it? don't. They don't make sense. The spike so, pack. Even this, you know what elevator floor you got off on. You're going to be like, girl, it was either the 10th or 11th floor. I don't know where I'm at. I'm on the 10th or 11th. That's what you usually be like. Or you run real quick because the doors, um, a lot of those places and stuff, they close, but um, they'll lock behind them automatically. You could have stuffed something real quick. As soon as you see him acting crazy or whatever, convulsing it, to me, I would have stuck a butter knife something through the damn door and called on the damn neighbors and started knocking um 
you know, next door and stuff like that and get help yelling or screaming, people can hear you. So I'm just kind of like, how long was he just sitting there where he's turning blue? That's the question that a lot of people say. I'm like, she's calling and he's turning blue. Um, some people are saying it takes 15 minutes to, uh, you know, to turn blue or whatever the case is. But, um, yeah, you she know, people to clean up. I mean, it just sounds like I'm trying to put my clothes on and move out the paraphernalia. Well, yeah, some people were saying she had to get dressed first, right? Um, but it's 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 a it's a lot of thoughts about it. And it, like I said, I I listened to it in black and white. I heard a woman who was frantic. Some people felt like, oh, it sounded like a staged call. Some people felt like, <laughs> why is she turn? You know, why is he turning blue so fast? Or um, sounds like they knew each other longer than one night or um, there's a lot there's a lot that's being said ab about it that's why I'm like let me talk to the people because I, I heard it one way but I'm not opposed to listening to what other people think about it yikes hello mm -hmm. yep uh, hey Miss Sai you are Hi. live what do you think about it well first of all I want to say thank God she wasn't a sister because <laughs> uh -huh. it was that would be a whole nother conspiracy theory being taken to a whole other level. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you are aware of the fact that we're still being blamed for it, though. Oh, well. Yeah. We're being blamed for having to conspire because we don't like his advice that we conspired. I showed the receipt a little bit earlier um, <laughs> of having hired someone to Oh, that's non-black to I go in and set them up a whole mess wow i haven't heard of that one yet um i i agree with you though i heard a girl that she was she was freaking out and i and i think because she did see him as this high what profile guy that um she did look at him as a celebrity and i think she quite frankly saw him you know dying and it you know, she she was trying to, you know, save his life, but she was freaking out. I think she was having like a normal, considering the circumstances, um, human emotion and, and reactions to the situation. Yeah, I I I think so too. That's why I'm like I I listened to it. Yeah. That's what I got from it. But I'm like I saw so many conspiracies, and I'm like, okay, let me get the people a space, you know, to really voice out what they think. You know, and when the people say that, oh, they, they knew each other longer than one day, I'm like, she said herself they met the day before. But, you know, when I listened to the call a couple times, I'm like, okay. I mean, she could have, might have. But like I said, that's where I get the pillow talk from. Like, just because they had just met the day before doesn't mean they didn't have an extensive correspondence prior to yeah. that the day to the point where she could have known that he had a mother and a sister. Like, that's not a big secret when you're getting to know somebody. Those are some of the first things that come out. The way yeah. she was saying his name, you know she was a fan. She kept saying, it's Cambus Seville, it came Seville. Like, she knew who he right. was, so she knew The fact that, he that she didn't know that he... Th that just lets me know he did a good job laying down how important he was. Like, he really put it to her like, I'm, I'm Kevin fucking Sarah. You don't know who you're dealing with. And she really bought this. <laughs> she really thought he was this top tier... Got type it. of a, you know situations i was like she couldn't have possibly known like the real real him she really thought that he was some celebrity that everybody would know and it, it probably has something to do with they were at a bar right mm -hmm. you can't think that they was at the bar and nobody recognized him whether it had been the bartender somebody else he was probably getting vip treatment at the bar and she felt like whoa they treat him like he yeah so he's a local probably, celebrity that right makes sense. He, they, they probably were, but you know, she thought that extended outside of whatever they had going on. So, mm -hmm. the only thing I picked up that could have been a little, and this, this is a conspiracy, it's not that, you know, was um, if she was the girl in that video um, that he was, you know, uh, saying to get out the frame, mm -hmm. if that was her, um, the exchange that, um, I picked up on was that she was trying to be possibly seen. And that's just conspiracy. And well, uh, mm. you know what I mean? Like that she was possibly trying to get into that frame to be seen. Cause he had to tell her a couple of times, like, you know, look, um, 
are you going to, you know, get out my frame so I can start the show or, or what? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just picked mm-hmm. up on the pop. Oh, yeah. Also, too, I was going to add in, it's called a pulse check. Um, you're usually able to do, like, the heartbeat. You usually tell 911 how, you know, how many, you know, beats per, is it beats per second um, that he's having? So that's what I'm talking about. That's why I found that was weird. Why didn't she call that out? Because she had enough time. So I'm wondering what was going on during that time period because there he didn't immediately, or unless, I mean, unless he was doing drugs, we just need to know what was going on with the, um, with the autopsy report. That's what I feel like it's a lot more for to make his heart go that you know dramatically into a cardi what is it cardiac arrest mm-hmm. yeah i think it was something else in play with it they might have been doing a little bit more mm, you know and i think that's the reason unconfirmed. why she was trying to she was trying to stuff what? up yeah was, i think was she was trying to clean, clean the room up before the police came mm. let me clean up and hurry up before we go to jail well, I mean, before he goes to the morgue, and I get rid of whatever is out. Damn. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. You go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say. Just my thing is that too much time went by. That's what the fishy part is. A lot of time was lost between when she, you know, because it doesn't seem like she initially called nine one one. She called nine one one as soon as the situation was pretty much damn near just done you know so it's kind of like I, I, that's why I'm just kind of weirded out because I'm like typical steps as a nurse they're, they know what to do they're trained for this they go to school for this they're ready they're dealing with this type of stuff every day when you're going to work and stuff so that's why I'm kind of like you know I understand people have like normal reactions but you're still trained for it and I know that this is a stranger for her it's not like this is kind of like a you know a somebody that you really love and care for. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like with a stranger, you're still a little bit detached, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Yes, he, she seems like more like a fan. You know, she's like, it's freaking Kevin Samuels. Like, you get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You know, during that moment. So it's just like, you know, it wasn't proper. Like, hey, um, black male, he's blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm saying? They know how to use terms. He's he's around this age. He's an older gentleman. Duh, duh, duh. You know, usually they would spit out those medical terminology the facts real quick because they're trained to do that every day because you have you know unfortunately patients that may code or you know um you're watching you know you know uh, pregnant women something may happen all the time that's is not uncommon so that's why i'm just kind of like that's what just that just analyzing this it just all this doesn't seem typical no that's really true um, I never thought I never thought about it that way. Honestly, I listened to the call and I'm like, all right, well, she tried. <laughs> That's what I got from it. I'm like, okay, she tried, and um, I was I was a little, if you don't mind me, actually, I'm not sure if you gave the the Oprah angle yet. I was a little late to the the. Did you speak on that, child? You they did. bring her up in there because they feel like <laughs> Oprah is. Um, she has helped ruin black women's uh, um black men's image as well. That um, <laughs> and I I just listen. I just recommend that they get well. I just want them to get some help. I want the black men that feel like Oprah have anything to do with Kevin Samuels <laughs> and what? his untimely it's, demise. Mm. I just want them to get some help. Oh, like, a- that's it. You know, you know what I mean. Like it's a lot of women too. Like I was having um. A discussion with someone and they they was right along with the the theory because she did that that interview that she's you know trying to ruin the black man like so they're they're kind of in with that too and i'm just like it's is one interview she did so that's a that erase a whole legacy you know i don't know if it's an age difference imagine your homeboy dying and you immediately being like but oprah Right. I think that she's worse than what my home like they're not even in the same. I could see if him and Oprah was on the same network, if they did the same kind of work. Oprah's not a relationship guru. <laughs> Oprah, she's not any of that stuff. So like why is she 
coming into the conversation. You, you want to find a black woman, the black, no right. different than the guy who had, you know, joined the show the other night who said he literally pulled Ugh. Oprah out the air. He said, right. Oprah never apologized for the color purple. <laughs> and I'm like, what Even was she? Spielberg doing? produced it. What is she apologizing for? Apologize. Alice Walker wrote it. Why is Oprah apologizing? But you know what, though? That's what a lot of men do when they can't win an argument. They just, they deflect and they pull. <laughs> The neighbor down the street do the same thing and don't care. Oh, but it, the, the deflection gets so bad. It makes me question if you're well and if I should call for you to have a check done on you. Right. I guess I just kind of, I mean, you try not, to, try not to get caught up in people you don't <laughs> know personally. But for me, you know, um, I watched her a lot growing up and I really believe she was a good source of um, wisdom and spiritual guidance for mm -hmm. a long time. And she has done more good um, than bad. I don't agree with the, the interview as well because he wasn't here to defend him himself. Yeah, but, but that's just one small drop in a lifelong bucket of, I think, of, of decency. And to see how um, they constantly come at her um, on social media, it's just really, really, um, it's, per it's personally sad to see because I, I think she's worth um, more love than what she's given nowadays. Everyone has their faults and that's the thing. Everyone's faults don't align and, and aren't available for you to create a Venn diagram to bring her into it, right? Like I definitely understand that a lot of people consider Oprah to be a sellout. Or she's not as, you know, as potent or as, as mm. um, you know, pro-Black as it pertains to what she speaks out on and so on and so forth. She got Open Winfrey Network. She got her magazine. She got this, that, and the third. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has any relevance to this situation. Right. And that's why it's like, help me understand the parallel that you are drawing, you know, when it comes to her. I think the reason why, again, we got Oprah, and I'm I'm pulling up the tweet right now. We got Oprah, Jerry Springer, Mari, uh, Gail <laughs> King, they brought into no. it. And I'm like, you know what? I figured out what it is on top of the fact that y'all just like to deflect because it helps you feel better about your lost king. There are worse people than Kevin. There's Oprah. There are worse people than Kevin. There's Jerry. Right. Y'all keep dragging celebrities into it, celebrities with way larger names. Right. Dragging them into it because y'all figure name dropping will validate Kevin Samuels at some point. And you feel like if y'all can attach Kevin Samuels to some of these larger names, then he'll begin to trend and gain that notoriety that he otherwise wouldn't gain on his own. There is no reason Oprah and Kevin Samuels should be in the same sentence. Oprah got her faults just like me and everybody else. Right. However, her faults don't align with what Kevin Samuels does or does not do. It, well, it just doesn't make sense. So let's let's let me let's let me just read this tweet from Oprah and see what y'all yeah, think. Because I can't see or, it. Yeah. Not from Oprah, but you know about Oprah from this page. Here they go trying to excuse shit for Kevin. They said, "I I have never and see this is how I know they're not from here. I have never remember." All right, so. They don't remember seeing a black woman with status that died and black men celebrating that. I do not like Oprah Winfield and Gail King, but I would never celebrate if they passed away tomorrow. So it is disgusting to see black women doing it to a black man. Like, yeah. what? It's a reach. It's <laughs> well, I mean, you know why they're doing all of this. I mean, they're, they're doing dumb. This because they want to make it seem like he is an unfair, you know, it's unjustified black man in America that's being targeted by these hateful, angry, bitter black men. That's what they want to perpetuate that, you know, 
He's being, he's not protected. Look at this, you guys, just like T.I. screaming out. He's not being protected, you guys. Look at what they're doing. He's a, he's a black man that's being crucified. And let's bring in the word white supremacy. Let's bring in the word of using the system. This is exactly what we go through. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to bring down our black kings. They use those talking points. And then, like you say, they gaslight us. They make us feel like, Oh, we, now we need to coddle them. We need to come and secure our, our black kings right now. We need to come in, you know, and, and, and scoop them up right now. Kevin Samuels is a goat and all this other BS rhetoric. And T.I., he, um, he's very charismatic, right? But yeah. I picked up some stuff with him. I never forget when I was watching um, that show that they had on VH, VH1, VH1. And him and his wife was having a, a car race. And it was having it was like a fun family day. They was having a car race. And his wife was about to beat him. And just so he would not lose the race, could he finish the race out? No. He stopped midpoint just to I guess make it seem like he made her let her win. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this look, this look. <laughs> I go. We can't say the N word, but I, I just thought that was just so telling of his character, you know, that he couldn't even like just finish the race out fair and square. He had to stop midpoint to make it seem like his wife won that race. And he and I picked up little stuff like that about his personality over the years. I was listening to his podcast, and um, as soon as women, a woman was like in the room and she spoke up, mm -hmm. said, all right, you're not on mic, you can't speak. But it was other people, other guys in the room that was speaking. So he has little little personality quirks or whatever you want to say that um, always stood out that um, didn't sit well with me. So like check the hymen of his daughter? Oh, mm. oh yeah. Mm. I mean, it, when you <laughs> literally, again, the whole situation with him and the comedian with the orange hair, mm -hmm. Lauren Fields, that story it was told in such a wrong way. Like the headlines was like T.I. Heckles comedian that joked about his allegations. And that's not how it went. That woman was given her set. She didn't even mention T.I. in her set. Mm. She was so fucking funny that T.I. went to the back of the club and started calling her a bitch. Mm. And started telling her to take her wig off to mm. prove that she had hair under her wig. Yeah. And then she said, when you respond to them allegations, then I'll take my wig off. And then he got mad. But the way he portrayed it and the way the blog ran with it, it was mm. like, oh, T.I. heckled her because he she was joking about the allegations. No. She was being heckled first. So seeing a woman in power, even if the only power mm. that the woman has is to make the room laugh, is to have more charisma than you. He is threatened by yeah. that. And he will, uh, you know, he, he will stop that by any means necessary, whether it's being disrespectful or whatever. But that's still somebody that we're supposed to expeditiously, depending on his vernacular, we're supposed to take it as if he is uh -huh. next for the black community to do and to be the spokesperson that he needs to be. As in that, and I think the fuck not. Mm -hmm. I think the hell not. Like it's mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? I also didn't realize, and, and I read it. I read it out loud. I read the tweet out loud to y'all and everything. And I'm reading it, and then I read the chat. They said Oprah name looked funny in this chat. I told y'all. I told y'all. I said I said Oprah Winfield and Gail King. Her name ain't Oprah Winfield. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busy trying to read the chat and not get distracted. Uh, read the tweet and not get distracted. Right. And not stop too much. Whole time, her name is Oprah Winfrey, and that's why it's like, yo, y'all gotta turn. But this is the second place that I've seen Oprah being dragged into the convo. <laughs> the first place where Oprah was dragged into the convo was right here when Gadsden was sitting here on the show, and he said Oprah didn't say sorry yeah. for participating in the color purple. It's crazy. How do we drag people like? And Gail got dragged into it too. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, they'll, they'll find um, sisters to drag into this mess. I had a funny thought though. I said, well, since we're like reimagining people after their death, you know, how about I imagine myself <laughs> and I want people to think of me um, 
as you I'm just I'm being sarcastic, but you know, is they are reimagining Kevin Samuels. Like they're they're trying to make him seem like he was some kind of Malcolm X mm-hmm. the, the type of figure. And I'm like, what where are you coming from? How about I, I when I pass away I could be Coco Chanel. I'm into fashion, so that's why I put that as an example. Since reimagining people. But um I don't know. It's just it's annoying. It's it's just incredibly annoying. Also, too, I gotta say this. I realized how dumb T.I. was until I literally heard him speak about, you know, um, business ventures. He said, black people, you guys need to go buy you some land, right? Then he said, don't worry about LLCs and getting a corporation. It's too hard. It takes too much time. I literally was like, are you kidding me? I said, this man is literally misleading our whole generation. I said, if you know anything about LLCs, that's the easiest thing that you can do. I literally helped my friends out with getting, registering them at LLC. I'm like, that's the easiest thing. Getting land, that is harder. That's not something easy, especially too, that land is just going to sit there. You don't know when somebody's going to be like, hey, let me go ahead and develop on that land that you bought. You don't know. It just sits over time. So it's just like people really do see this man as some type of um, you know, teacher. He's an inspiration. He's somebody that we should look up to. And I'm like, T.I. is trash. He really doesn't know what he's talking about unless you have somebody that actually deals with that stuff, deals with the field, has their own LLC, has their own business accounts, all that other type of stuff. You will realize to yourself, damn, this man really a damn fool. No, he is. I think even around that same time, he was advising people to join some type of investment group, I believe. And come to find out the investment group was um, a scam. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, he has he has a track record if you want to look. It's just that because I think um, he, you know, people find him charismatic because he used big words. He gets away with a lot. And because he's a male, um, you know, he gets away with a lot. And um, we just don't wait, give our, I think, um, black women that same grace. You know, they could do... They can't. They they could not have a long list of, of, of mess ups, right? And um, still be considered uh, respectable. You have nothing to do but read books in prison. He read a dictionary and he learned some words. <laughs> I've never thought he like. He's stupid. I can't with him and all these expeditiously like. So it's, it's a it's a mess. He go literally his joke at his comedy show is to give his audience um a spelling bee. He asks them what a word means and asks if, if they can define it. Bitch, I don't got time. My children are in the midst of spelling bees, and I get my spelling together by asking Siri to, to you know asking Google to pull things up. I don't got time to be paying to go to a comedy show for you to be trying to put me through a class of a word that you really just learned today. Please yeah. stop. Don't play with he's me. He's not funny. He's not. I went to a show. Funny looking. It was, it was very, very mediocre. Okay. To all of y'all who are channel members backstage, I, you've heard T.I.'s full comedy set from beginning to end. If you are a channel member, it's back there. And if you're curious and if you've joined and you haven't scrolled down enough, just send me a message or send me a DM or something and I'll um, make sure you get that link. But nonetheless, let's get into this tweet here. It says, Kevin Samuel says, that we survived slavery, we survived Jim Crow, we survived mass incarceration, but we may not survive the f- <laughs> the feminist war against black men. Use it to divide <laughs> the black community. You ever wonder why the government never targets the feminist? Like the government and feminism, and then you got Mari and Jerry Springer. And then is this Dr. Umar Johnson? Yeah, you got Dr. Umar Johnson in your tweet. Um, like, what do y'all think? This tweet seems to be all over the place. What do y'all think about it? It reminds me of some, um, what's that child's name? Um, Candace Owens type of stuff. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like that, you just t- uh, tweeting hot top uh, topic points, hot points to get people to listen to you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and there is an attack on like women. Period. I think, um, I mean, you, you can see that with the 
Roe versus um, versus um, it's late, y'all. So help me out with the abortion. That's Roe versus, versus Wade. Wade. <laughs> They're trying yeah. to stop that now. And then I heard something about now they. Now they they're canceling Plan B pills. Mm. Yeah, they also saying that you can't what cross state lines to get an abortion. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what's that all about? And I think because women are educated and making more money, they're you know they're still trying to control us. You know, so uh, all the kind of men we want, we should let them speak out. Yeah. That's what I said. I suggest anybody that's dating, hey, you meet a guy, say, hey, it's really sad about Kevin Samuels, right? Yeah. The moment he says, yeah, block him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Block Hear him. what he got to say. You know what I'm saying? Pretend to be. Like, oh, yeah. Know, let him let him get comfortable. That's how you'll get the true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah him. Let him speak. But this is another point that I have to say. How are they seeing a feminist war? Nobody's killing black men in mass as much as how black men are killing, you know, each other. Let's be honest. So I'm just kind of confused. What feminist war? Nobody's out here coming after them. Are they saying black women that's coming after them? I'm kind of confused with that whole statement. It doesn't make sense because they're trying to say slavery, which deals with, you know, they want to say the white man. Then they want to say, you know, Jim Crow with the white man. So what, who is that? Now they want to say mass incarceration. So it's like they're using all these shock words, these big terms, these pivotal moments in history to talk about, you know, Kevin Samuels. It doesn't make sense with all these, what do you call it? False is it equivalencies and stuff like that. It's just like, mm-hmm. I, I just, that's what I'm saying. A lot of them, they want to make themselves seem like they're being attacked. They're under oppression. But I don't understand this when a lot of their own um, black influencers that are males are wearing their own nail polish. They're doing that on their own. Um, they're wearing skirts. Nobody forced them to do any of that type of stuff. There's black male, um, you know, people that are sitting here, uh, you know, like you said, wearing dresses. They encourage that type of stuff. They do um, mocking of black women all the time. So I'm just kind of confused when I'm like, you guys, you know, uh, what demasking lies your own selves. That's I think I'm... when they say feminist war, I think they mean that like, you know, collectively we do not agree with the way that they as a whole, what they dish out. We don't agree. We're mouthy. We're mouthy. We're going to fight back. We're going to give some criticism and we're not just going to accept anything. So I think when they say feminist war, I don't think that they mean physical violence. I mean, I think when they say feminist war, they mean that we are not submitting to mm-hmm. them. The way that they think that we should be, we should just be taking their word as gospel. If Kevin Samuel say, don't believe your fucking daughter, but she said, that's what we need to do ASAP. And if we don't do it, oh, this is a feminist war. We can't get along. Y'all don't understand a man need to run the household and so mm-hmm. on. You know, yeah. we, mm-hmm. we got too much mouth and too much independence for them to deem us to be in union with them. And it's not that we're not in union. It's just, yeah, before I let you around my kid, before I make you my life partner, before I take your last name, um, I want to make sure that you understand some things. But you just think you're supposed to come over here and dominate, and I'm just supposed to be... You have to earn dominating. And even, even that sounds kind of weird, right? But I'm not saying that... I'm not against women submitting to their men. But you've got to earn that. You've got to show that you've got common sense, that you've got empathy, that you have emotional intelligence, that you have legitimate intelligence, that you can spell three syllable words. You know what I'm saying? Like the bar is, it's not that, it's not hella hard. It really just requires for you to, to, to be a person that your parents raised right, a person that's willing to raise kids and a person that I want to model my kid after. That's the bottom line. Do I want my kid to be like you or not? Like that's that's like the rule of thumb. Would I be willing to have a son and for my son to be like you? And if not, then you got some work to do. I don't want to make another son that's just running around here doing, saying whatever, impregnating whoever and feeling like women are disposable pump and dump spots. Now, while women need to require a little bit more of themselves, men just want to show up and present themselves any old type of way. And when we don't accept it, all of a sudden it's a feminine war. No, it's not. It's me laying down my what? My boundaries and my standards. And if you can't dismantle my boundaries and my standards, all of a sudden it's a feminist war. I'm not with that. 
and Ooh. that's that's a problem. Mm-hmm. That is that, and I think too. Like I think some studies are coming out that shows that you know black women are doing their thing. They making them a lot more money, you know, than black men. Um, in some cases, I don't know. but we're coming up. We're doing our thing, and I think it's making men scared. And they want, they just want to still be in control because a woman, when she is independent and has her, you know, her own thoughts and is not worried about, you know, depending on a guy for resources, you know, he has to naturally step his game up. And a lot of guys just don't want to, they, they don't want to do that. You know? Oh, you may tell you this too. A lot of guys will say that they it's easier to have a baby with a woman. I've heard men say that, how do I know that you can even give birth? Some of y'all women can't give birth, so I'm not going to get married to you because I want to know if you can have a baby first. And it's kind of like a lot of these guys, I'm like, you're not worth submitting to. A woman does is going to naturally submit to you. Do you have a car? Do you have a house? Do you work a job? No. So why is a woman going to sit here and submit to you when you don't even have your own pot to piss in? And that's my issue with a lot of these guys. They don't want to sit here and own up to what they got. How is a woman going to sit here? What do we even have? We're going to stay in the damn at your mama's house. That's what a lot of them want you to do. They want to pump a baby into you so you can stay at the damn mama house with them so you can, you know, suck their little wee wee and everything like that and, and give whatever over to them and you go over work, you bend over, you do everything, take care of that damn household but they still want to act like the King Kong of the damn house. Right. That's why they every time like a, a person qualifiers like when an influence celebrity, especially a, a black woman, uh, speaks out about I want my man to do this, I want my man to be this, I want whatever. It goes viral because it's like how dare she has things that she wants how dare she know what her needs are and it just don't it's a double standard it don't make you know any sense because of course we are allowed to have requirements qualifiers and i and i don't know i i guess maybe that wasn't always the norm but i think we're coming to a point where they better get used to it you know they see that things are changing they don't like it they don't like they're used it. to their mamas yeah they don't like it. Yeah. When we look at our mamas, when we look at our grandmamas in history, they accepted so much they trash treatment. Support. I mean, like my grandmother, I mean, the story for days about how, yeah, you, you know, all the kids by the same man, five kids, one man, but he left her in the house, let the electricity cut off. She had to work three jobs so that he could go to this family course. Now. And you listen to those stories of her just accepting bull crap and wanting him to come back and She's wearing dentures because her, her front tooth is knocked out because he pushed her down the steps one night because he ain't got no emotional control and all this other stuff. And that is what was accepted back in the day. And that's my grandparent. Then my mother has a, a, you know, a different story of abuse. Although it wasn't physical, it was still very much emotional and it still taints her to this day. They expect, you know, listening to their parents and things like that, that we're going to accept that baby. We got too many options. Yeah. nowadays and too much common sense i know people are annoyed at the options they're annoyed at the buzzwords they're annoyed at all that stuff however there are too many and, and, and even if the option is being alone yeah even if the option is is and listen i'm listen I'm, even if the option is self-pleasure with the rose and the vibrator listen i'm a self-pleasure person they straight I, I don't need no toy <laughs> Okay, I I just I do, I'm, a, I'm a DJ I'm with you know what I'm, I, I, the the toys desensitize <laughs> you and it makes real sex less fun because you be expecting a person to get to that no 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 so don't and like, they so never pleasure, will. It, it never will and it'll it will make real sex less that's why fun, I, you know that's why <laughs> go ahead that's why what I stay away from it I was. <laughs> That's how I felt because girls were like it snatched my soul. I'm like, I don't want no device. I don't want nothing can't like do that. that. And you can play with yourself without needing <laughs> needing a motor rock, needing, you know, that's but you know, that's a whole nother thing. But it's like, listen, we got so many more options, and we we and I'm so glad that as black women, there's still so much room for us to, you know, grow. But I'm glad that we're to the point where 
we will say, I can do bad, but I can do bad all by myself. I would rather do bad all by myself and take the accountability, not have to worry about any, you know, zingers coming out of nowhere. And But, you know, men feel like a woman submitting to them is owed. No, it's earned. You aren't just you know born why? because you have a penis and feel like, oh, I'm going to get women to submit to me. Absolutely not. You have to earn that. You have to show me that you have enough working logic, working common sense, that you are emotionally astute, that you are a provider. Uh, there's so many different things that you have to prove. And honestly, it don't even have anything to do with how you look. And that's the reason why I'm like, yo, this Kevin Samuel thing is a mess because you call into him first thing he asks me. What's your size? What's your dress size? What's your this? What's your that? Like, no, men think that you are old to be submissive because sometimes they'll catch a, a little spicy fling, right? They'll catch somebody that might be outside of the community that'll just, uh, you know, bend over backwards. You know, there was a thing recently where there is a such thing as, I want to say it's called like tourism trafficking or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And there were mm -hmm. some women who were um, in some of these outer countries who were like, listen, that's not even happening a whole bunch over here. But you all need to treat your men right. And maybe they wouldn't be over here. I I heard about so that. you got some women trying to um, just, just step in and give a man the, the stars and the moon without that man having earned it. And so when men go to have these little jump offs, whether it be in a, another country or whatever the case is, thinking that they're old that like this, this conversation, it, it could be so deep and yeah. I, I'm not trying to get all over the place with it. But what men expect, what women are willing to give and women being the gift, like, listen, the pussy got the power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, the you the know why pussy, though? And we have a portal in between our legs, for goodness sakes. These single All you mothers are telling their sons they the main house. That's, that is also another that's the problem. problem. That's why you think the only thing it takes to be the man of the house is to be a male. So then they grow up to think, oh, I'm the man of the house. Mm -hmm. you not, you, that's the reason why. That's the reason why they really think it's the bare minimum. Like, it's this is sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just the men not even being there. to Exactly. Rest. That's what I mean. Like the mama is telling the little boy, you the man of the house. He grows up thinking, what does it take to be the man of the house? And nothing but be a man. Nothing but be a male. And I'm so proud. Like I'm a, I'm a single. I, I was married for a while, but for the most part, I've been a single mom. And I just never put that on my son like that. I never, mm -hmm. I never you know? Uh, he's a child, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna raise him into a man. And um, I don't know. It's That's scary. scary. Like this really is yeah. scary. Much of a child to to say you're the man. Too far gone. Yeah. Too much. Too much gone. I I would love to to see what a woman has to say about Kevin Samuels that liked him. And it's a lot of them. Um, that's why I, I was more so surprised to um, see how many women were like, his, I think I, um, I was watching something and they were saying that most of his subscribers were, were women, that the women outweighed the guys as far as um, subscribers. Like male worship. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just surprised. And then like on a lot of my social feeds, you know, especially on Facebook where, um, you know, I've been friends with people for years, um, they they was kind of like you know, I agree with what a lot of he said, what uh, with a lot of what he said, and I'm like, wow, pick me, pick me, yeah, like it was just it, <laughs> it was just very disappointing because I I didn't think that he had so many um, women that were into what you know what he was talking about. I'm looking like what how like what part like how could you look past um, just that disrespectful rhetoric to hear anything that this guy had to say you know and um it's it's it's, it's, it's just weird and sad to to see that um so many william i mean women excuse me don't i don't know i don't know if it's a value situation they don't love themselves situation they're used to people talking to them type of situation yeah and um, you called in they were slow yeah I they seem slow they to find... me I think that they find value and they see that, the, you know, the same way that the the men 
find um you know a market in the disrespect of black women yeah. you've got people like kevin samuels and others who literally market the disrespect of black women and they know they're gonna have an audience that's just waiting it's not even a question it's not like i'm about to try something new and i wonder if i'm gonna get any support you know that that sort of support is gonna be there it exists period point like there's so much of that so for women who you know it's an easy way to find a safe haven because you know as a woman jumping on that bandwagon you know that any woman that's going to stand up right because it, you know, if we're going to keep it within the genders, you will have more women speaking out against women who support that than men mm -hmm. because it, it, it will seem more like fair game. Um, you already know that the women who are going to step up to hold that woman accountable or call her out for subscribing to that, there's already a group of men that are there that are going to bark at the women. Oh, so yeah. if I was to step up and to address one of those women, there would already be 35 men ready to bite my head off like you don't get it she get it she gonna find a man you ain't you better that you know what i mean so i that's that's how i see it yeah so date each other date each yeah. other and my and my thing to what disheartens me is that we're literally stick over there <laughs> we're, we're we're literally could as black women could be crying out saying um and i wrote this saying that we are hurting you know that we are under attack you know and nobody really seems to care about that you know like we, we we're saying that this guy is not and right are. and they they'll, they have manipulated uh, they have turned this situation into again attacking black women you know what i mean like instead of concentrating on, like if you really like him and you are sad that he's gone then okay so be it but instead of just it being that, it has really turned into, I just can't believe how disgusting these women are for celebrating his death. <laughs> I'm like, they really got on cold with this message, like, real, real fast. Those are and, the women and, we and should again, be avoiding. Who's celebrating it? Right. That's the thing. Like, tell right. me. And, and this is the thing. Like, if especially when it comes to um, a T.I., and people like him, they love calling somebody out in particular. Call the person, call the action out. Oh, to have a live stream with pom poms, or to da -da. you cannot call out a certain because this the the legitimate celebration isn't happening. Are there a couple of tweets with some jokes? Yeah, right. but are there really people celebrating it? Right. No, y'all would have called the individual out. There like is nobody celebrating that. I was wondering where was the invite. I said, I didn't, well, I didn't get my invite. Where, <laughs> right. Because let me tell you, I would have been in the bushes of a celebration just being like, oh, this how y'all serve? I, I, I sure would have been watching to see what's going on just so I could report on it or something like that. I, you damn right. Ain't been no damn celebrations for me to even get into to report on. And y'all know I keep it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Let me tell you something. When it come to him or anybody else, it's like, look, I'm I'm here to report the truth. This is a trending topic right now. Right. You know, it doesn't help me to say, oh, he didn't he didn't pass with a BBW because you know how salacious the story is. Oh, Kevin Samuels passed away. Last thing he smashed was a BBW, but he preached against BBWs because he considered them to be obese. Da, 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 da. No, but me dismantling that rumor. It, it, it dismantles the ability for me to even salaciously celebrate, right? Salaciously. I don't think I that's the word, but y'all know what I'm doing. Twink. Hey, but <laughs> I, just me being a reporter doing my thing, I, I'm going to call a thing a thing. So if even if I have to disregard, right, something that I would love to be true to call him a heavy court, I got to do what it is. And, and it's the same thing. If there were people celebrating, I would report on it. I literally have not seen no celebrations yeah. i think they don't understand the difference between celebration and just not caring i'm not about i to, think they I get care. it but this is their attempt to guilt trip us and to give right. a fuck that's what i think and they was very good they did that very fast and mm -hmm. every, i mean the narrative just became oh my god i never and, I, and it really had me questioning like okay what are the rules when it comes to death like of course you want to be respectful you know you want to be res res respectful. I, I don't know if it's a black colloquialism where we talk about not talking about the, the dead, but <laughs> but you can make jokes. You could talk about 
your how they how a person's life af- affected you. You know what I mean? Like it's it like it turned into like this big taboo. You don't speak of the death of dead people. You don't speak of I'm like what? <laughs> Where are all these these new? So what was surviving Neverland? <laughs> you said what? What was surviving Neverland? Oh, what was so that? He didn't and live in peace, ever... therefore he don't get the dying peace. He don't get the rest. He didn't live in peace. Why should he rest in peace? And I guess that's why they do have a thing against, you know, Oprah. Which, I, you know, he wasn't here to defend himself, so I, I you know, I get that. Um, but in this case, like with Kevin, like, I just feel like, I don't know, I just feel like they, they put this new high standard on talking about a person after they have, you know, passed. And that they I talked about that girl that overdosed. Say it again. They thought that was funny. What? I didn't hear you. When that girl, when that, that black girl had overdosed in the Connecticut with the guy she met in Bumble. Oh, oh, oh yeah, divest yeah. and got her sent straight to heaven. Lauren Fields. And then old boy got stabbed by his Becky. And yeah. they wanted us to help them then. Christian Toby Oven Sully. Yeah. All right. So it's it's well, just keep the same energy. Yeah, it just had me looking at things like, okay, though, like just spiritual wise, because I, you know, that, that is important for me to be, you know, in line with that. So, no, you know, I personally, you know, you know, you don't want to celebrate, you know, I'm happy somebody's dead, but I think it's fair. You, you know, at funerals, we have, you know, told stories, and sometimes they wasn't always flattering, you know, about people, and I think that's okay. But it just kind of killed me how it seemed like these new standards were put on <laughs> on this situation that I, I never heard before. It's pathetic because you know what it shows? It shows that us as Black people, we have the power to protect and gatekeep and inform people to not do things or to do things that need to be done. How come when Michael Jackson died or other legends died, no one decided to go stand up? No, we're not going to tolerate this. This isn't going to happen. How is it that we decide to pull out these tricks, shit that we've never even heard before? T.I. creates this right. figure of speech. Oh, y'all are bullying a dead man. Bullying a dead man? Right. He just right. made up a new term. We never heard this shit before. However, if we were going to talk about black men that were going to be bullied, how many people have talked shit about MLK and um, you know Malcolm X? and other really great black revolutionary folks. How come we never pulled out all of these stops for people who really did shit for the community? It just goes to shows that until people are really triggered, they ain't gonna do shit. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part about it. Mm -hmm. It's sad. I mean, hell, we should have pulled out these stops for Michael Jackson. Black man, they trying to tarnish him with some goddamn pedophile, uh, you know, pedophilia, uh, 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 you know, rumors. And the feds investigated him for 10 years and they found right. shit. Right. Even the kids that, that were now adults said it wasn't true. One of them admitted even that awesome they lied. Stuff. One of them and, even committed. And nobody pulled out those stops for the greatest musician that ever existed. Right. The greatest musician. And we talk about an ain't shit nigga on YouTube. We pulling out, we create new terminology mm-hmm. to protect him. And who, how is he deserving of protection mm-hmm. and new terms? Like how D.L. Hughley comparing him to R. Kelly? But what was the comparison? The what comparison the that D.L. Hughley brought to R. Kelly was, oh, R. Kelly would have garnered more, um, you know, s- sympathy or recognition than Kevin Samuels. He was a bigger dude. He was a bigger dude. He was in a totally different arena, and yeah. he was also a pedophile. But nonetheless, was absolutely what's R. Kelly got to do with 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 anything? Right. As black people, we have so much power. I mean, honestly, when you when you hear the term, oh y'all y'all bullying a dead man. Honestly, it sounds <laughs> a little stupid. It sounds it, it sounds a little stupid. Yeah. It sounds a little stupid, but if you were to dive into it, if there was somebody who really deserved to be protected, who really did something for the community or the culture, MLK, yeah. we would hello, we would subscribe to that shit. Mm-hmm. We would, right, right. Like right. I just, it, it, it's stupid. Like Ti, sit down. You stick your toes in people's sunshine. I, I oh, I was just, thinking that. 
I, I was I, thinking that like the nerve. I I, I don't have time. We Aren't gonna go to the bush man? and weep. We gonna go to the bush and weep, and then there's somebody calling in AMK Media. I gotta bring him up. Listen, AMK Media is he's a trip. He's something else. Let's see, ladies, y'all need to stay up here, okay? Because this this guy will make you want to um. I almost put him out my Discord one time. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> um, I have been listening to the conversation. Oh, and... snap, Aaron. I forgot you was here. You never, oh, yeah, yeah. You I would just been listening it. and stuff. I didn't want to interrupt, you know, because I know this is a very deep conversation, not only on your channel, but basically all across the internet. Um, and while I have listened to all sides, um, I don't have a actual opinion yet because I still want to listen more of it before I form a opinion, you know. But one thing I will say, as far as people who make all these appearances and stuff, like to um, Malcolm X and look like Jerry Springer and stuff, you know, those people. I wouldn't pay them no mind at all because it's like, you know, they are going uh, uh, like basically, of course, they, they are going to. I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me. They are going to support a uh, Kevin Samuels because, you know, that's who they are. I mean, basically, these people are probably basically trolls behind a computer, you know, that have no life and you know I mean of course they are like they are like going to latch on to anything that fits their narrative mm -hmm. and stuff you know I don't want to say much but yeah you know so I would not pay those people no mind you know I get you it yeah. yeah yeah now totally now me personally how do I feel about him um Again, you know, just me personally, there w are a number of things I don't agree with about him. As you know, you know, like taking somebody out on a date and expecting sex and stuff. You know, I, I mean, that's just not me. You know, I'm not going to take you out on a date. You know, once or twice and expect you to give me your body, you know, that's just not me personally, you know, mm -hmm. um, now were there some things that he said that I could have understood probably so, but it kind of got lost with the way he might've expressed like certain things and stuff, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, I'm, I mean, it's like, again, I don't want to form a opinion. I want to listen to both sides and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, um, so I'm kind of like on the fence and I'm like, okay, let me hear <laughs> what this person has to say. Let me hear what over here has to say. Mm -hmm. So I'm just listening, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but overall, you know, those people that try to compare him to a Malcolm Matt saying uh, Martin Luther King or a Jerry Springer, all of that stuff, you know, those are just trolls behind a screen and they have no life. And of course, they're going to latch on to something that fits their narrative, you know, yeah. um, just, you know, yeah, don't want to say much, but, you know, just wanted to hop on because... Um, I haven't talked to you in a while. You know, this is my first time talking to you since you came back on YouTube, you know. I know. It's been so, we, we had lost touch. And I know you were there. I remember you from the Janet Jackson live stream. I yes, did yes, after, that is me. And you um, and, and we follow each other on Instagram, mm -hmm. Prince A. Breezy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I recently had a birthday. Uh, that was like uh, April 14th. So, you know. Well, happy birthday. Hey. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's been about three weeks. Yeah, yeah, up, or close to a month now. You know, but yeah, it doesn't feel long month? at all. It doesn't feel long at all. You know, um, but I'm just, you know, listening, and you know, 
um, working on some things personally, you know, um, it's still 2022 and I still have some goals. So yeah. Um, but of course, you know, um, yeah. Um, I'm glad to talk to you, you know, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you know uh, I, I've been back for a while and I appreciate you listening again. Make sure you join the membership because you know, I would love I to have you join the membership backstage. like when you were on, you mm -hmm. know, before they kicked you off and stuff. I was a member. Um, and then like you had, you know, a new channel and stuff, and um mm -hmm. I got to renew my membership and stuff, you know. But I will I definitely be renewing everything. This time, but <clears throat> um I didn't see you one as a member this time. But nonetheless, you know, we will talk behind the scenes and I appreciate you being a um, a supporter and, and, and you know, your viewership doesn't go um, unappreciated or unnoticed. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. So let me do this. Let me go ahead and go to the bush. And I do have a very, very, very special guest. This person yes, please, also. Yes, please, please go to the bush. Yes, you know, yeah. you know, I need to we go need to the bush myself because. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta take you to the bush too. You know. Yeah, we, I need we to go to the take bush. You to yeah. the bush. <laughs> Everybody's got to go to the bush, especially you, but especially all of us. But we, 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 we definitely gotta go to the bush. And yeah, yeah, I, that, yes, I really need to go to the bush. Yeah. Yes. And then we're going to get into AMK Media. He also has a channel here, okay? And I'm very anxious to hear what he has to say because his opinion is always, um, how can I say, spicy. Let's go to the bush. We'll be right back. It was gone. All right. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Me gets me every time. All right, and yeah. we are back. So, AMK Media. Hey, what's up, Jane? What's up? How you feel? What What is it that you trying to? I, you got an opinion about everything. What you got? Nah. <laughs> These undeveloped niggas. I cannot <laughs> jump out the window for them. <laughs> they up on Twitter, misspelling words, comparing. Oprah to Kevin Samuels. That's not even the right correlation. Not Malcolm X. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not making any sense. And I know that you no you don't sense. feel like everything that Kevin Samuels said. I know that you feel like everything he said wasn't wrong. I know that you had found some truth in what he had to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's truth in what he has to say, but I'm not going to give them undeveloped niggas ammunition for them to use to disrespect black women. I'm not doing that. Because that's all they keep doing. They keep they they, they regurgitate Kevin Samuels' talking points mm -hmm. and to disrespect to, just to disrespect black women. I can't do that. I would mm -hmm. never do that. Uh uh. Hell no. Uh, oh you you can go ahead, Miss Sai. I had a question. Um for like you guys you said that you um you know learned something um from him. Was this before, like, is most of what you learned from him, like, when he first started, before he um, started, like, going viral with the, um, you know, antagonizing women videos? Is, did most of that come before that, or did you find um, wisdom after those moments? Well, it was definitely before. I took a break from him when, you know, he started, like, doing too much. Mm. So once he started doing that, I just took an extreme break from him because it, it just became it became too much. Okay. You know, calling people fat and everything else, and then with the sound horns, he was becoming very corny. And then at the same time, this thing called the manosphere I found out about, and a mm. bunch of them was just a bunch of fussy ass niggas, and I didn't want to be associated with them, so <laughs> I just okay. skipped along. Yeah. So I, I, I think that the ones that's left that's hardcore defending them is, you know, obviously, you know, I think it's they call them in sales, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that's the FBI what, targeted list. Man, definitely, man. The, yo, so I was in the Kevin Samuels group. I was in there. But the second the second I started correcting them on certain things, because you could tell a lot of them, they never had a girlfriend before. So yeah. it's like, yo, I'm like, how the hell, <laughs> how the hell are you speaking about women? But I could clearly tell, like, you don't get women. You never had a girlfriend. 
<laughs> you you're bitter because you keep getting rejected. Yeah. So when you try to correct them, all of a sudden they call you a simp or why should I do this or why should I do that? Or you don't know what you're talking about. I was like, all right, whatever. And the next thing you know, I'm kicked out the group. Mm. Like, they kicked you out? Yeah, they kicked me out. <laughs> they kicked me out like, what, like a year and a half ago. Wow. A year and a half but, ago. Try, dust yourself off and try again so you can get some receipts. I don't want to I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go in that group. <laughs> I do not want to go in that group. So tell the people the truth. Let's get it spicy. I'll go ahead and put myself on the spot, right? You know, we 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 be in the Discord, we be talking. You said that my my overall generalization, um, uh, you know, my opinion on Kevin Samuels is incomplete because I don't watch his videos in full from beginning to end. Tell yeah, people why you feel like my opinion is incomplete. I feel like you can't you can't have a valid opinion about anybody until you view them as a whole. So you just watching clips and pulling up clips, it's it's a bit incomplete. Mm. That's all. I, I just want you to. I know he triggers you. That's why I'm not pushing for you to watch his stuff, and like, you know, you're, you're commentating. So it's what you feel is it's your opinion. So. I'm not. I'm not here to change your mind about him, but I was just pointing out it's a bit incomplete. Listen, you me, me and AMK, we be arguing in the Discord. He even took it upon himself. We we just kept going back and forth about him in the Discord, and he was like, "Listen, I'm gonna end this conversation right here because you we're, we're not gonna. I'm I'm not firm on my, my stand." <laughs> <laughs> And I just said them the upside down smiley face because like that's absolutely true. I don't have to watch 57 minutes of your bullshit in order for me to understand that you're bullshit and you're not about shit. I don't have to watch your full shit to understand that. That's part see, of what discernment is. Mm -hmm. See, the thing I noticed about Kevin when he first started, y'all only seen the glow up of him. But when he was actually doing it, what he was doing, he was going to um, of the channels, so he was he was testing his point of view, and it was a couple of times he go on a couple of channels and he gets shut down, but he was polishing himself. You understand? So once he got polished, he just went. <laughs> he, he he took a deep jump, and he just started moving the moving the goalposts and conversations and everything else. Like he's real manipulative. So like the woman that I call up there, I'm like, yo, like he's really, <laughs> he's really exercising debate tactics against women that don't know any better. And I was part of, I was, I was a person that was telling Jane, yo, you should call up there. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was one so of them. I tell y'all when I'm telling you that my crew was telling me, yo, you need to call up there because you could, you could go in circles, you could, do and I considered it at first, but then I was finally like, no, like he is recruiting women who feel like they can beat him, but the first thing he'll do is trigger you off top, so you got to figure out how can I not be. I'm like, I can't stay true. Like it, it just didn't make any sense to call up there. But go ahead and continue. Yeah, so it, it, it's times when me and you do talk on the Discord and, you know, you trigger me, I trigger you, but we find, we kind of find, like, a balance of, like, respect somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Rather you get a conversation or I get a conversation or we just realize, like, I think we got to a point where we realized, like, our standpoint is not going to change, but our standpoint is there. And as long as you can look at it from your point of view or my point of view, and you could we could sharpen each other. You know what I'm saying? We could we we'd be able to see somebody else's point of view coming a mile away. So on the scale and, of like a hundred percent, because I know you found some value in what Kevin is saying. And I'm not saying that Kevin was wrong hundred percent of the time. A lot of the time okay. your 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 delivery will diminish your message a lot to the point where it doesn't matter what you had to say, your delivery killed it. Um, what, what percentage do you feel like out of a hundred Kevin was right? Is it like a 30, 70 thing? Like how often was he right, uh, with regards to what type of relationship advice he was trying to pop out to people? 
You talking about relationship advice or like his overall message? That is, that's two different things. Well, well then let's get into the two different things. Let's separate them. How do you, let's get into the relationship advice and then his overall. His relationship advice, 30%. 30% right, 70% wrong. Especially for, especially for people like my age. I'm I'm 34 years old, so people my age, they shouldn't be listening to him. Why would you? Because <laughs> they should not be listening to him. They're going to end up dry dick and, and, and no women to please. They're just going to be at the bar sitting by themselves, all awkward, not knowing how to talk to no female, and then, and then get mad that they're not getting no play. But then when they do get with a woman, they want to be all fussy and then wonder why the woman leaves them. <laughs> mm. No no woman wants to be around a fussy-ass nigga all day. And then you find them all up on the in the comment section. Fussy. It's girly. Yeah, like, that shit, yeah, that shit crazy. It's girly. <laughs> what man, kind of man like, would I want that needs advice from him? Man. I, I, I won't mention the channel, but I was in, a, I was in one channel and you know, I was I was doing a bit of trolling with these guys. You know, they was all in their feelings and shit. So they mods, they kept ta- they kept timing me out. And next thing you know, the next time I go back in the chat, I'm a moderator. I'm like, what the hell? But then I get a message from the channel. Uh, I get a message from the YouTube channel, and she's like, you know, I just had to protect you because you were spitting a lot of truth to them that they needed to hear. Hmm. You know what well, I'm saying? Like, yeah. because they they, I, they they not they not used to it. I I honestly think that um, the black incel groups need to kind of it, it needs to be talked about a little bit more. I'm not sure if um, the our, FBI talking um, on a, a larger scale knows, you know, what's going on with that subdivision, you know, and since they don't have their leader, you know, anymore. I, I just wonder where is that anger gonna turn to? Yeah, I wonder too, to be honest with you, because for some reason a lot of them looked at him as a father figure, right. which is fucking weird. Like within itself, like call me <laughs> cocky, but I didn't even look up to my father. <laughs> so it, it's like it, it's just one of those things. You like, know what? You... That's a good point. You don't even see men being online about their own. Like family, like situation the way that's because it was Mother's Day. (laughs) Damn, (laughs) (laughs) that's their mommy. It was Cinco de Mayo. It was a Spanish descent woman. Mama died. Oh man. (laughs) Yeah, but like a a lot of a lot of these um men are undeveloped and. I don't know what changed in my life. I don't know if it's like because I entered like trade school early or is it because, you know, I had to grow up fast because of my parents, you know, they're not here no more. I, I don't know what it is, but I notice a vast difference between myself and the other men my age. Mm. And a lot and a lot of them, they are really underdeveloped and they don't have the they don't have the cognitive to even handle a woman with an opinion without getting a, without getting frustrated. I just wonder what that energy is going to go to because then I didn't know that the guy who bombed the New York subway, you know, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. in New York, probably. I live in New York City, and um, I did not yeah. know that um, I'm, I'm hearing that he was influenced in one of um, Kevin's followers. Yeah, he, he watched Kevin Samuels he subscribed to a lot of Kevin Samuel's beliefs. Yeah. But that's scary to me. For real. That's like, that's really scary to me. Like, the, the bitterness out of them, like, I don't know where it comes from, but that that's never me. Like, like you said, like you said, Jane, like, me and you, we, like, we be going at it <laughs> until one of us just stops. You say you don't know where the bitterness comes from, but you know the source of their entertainment. We're progressing. They not. That's the problem. Yeah, make what makes sense. sense. Uh, you know, okay, so here's the next question I have because I I, I really enjoy when you're up here and listen, I value it because I know you you're at work all the time. Yeah, I'm um, at work right now. 
Right. So I know you had spoke about the relationship side of Kevin Samuel, right? But as how often he's right when he gives like relationship advice. So yeah, then 30%. you had kind of differentiated between the, you know, the 30%. How about just like as, as, as a regular person, as a regular being, how often on the scale of, you know, like a hundred percent or percentages, do you feel like he was right out outside of the relationship stuff? What's, what's that percentage for you? See what's missing from Kevin right now. And it's getting diluted because you know, of the underdeveloped niggas out here is that he really wanted to spread a message of black family and bringing up the black, black community as a whole. So I think he was getting to that, but he was being salacious for numbers. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you being honest about that because I, I, I agree with you on that. He was being Silly. He was being, yeah, yeah. That's why I stopped watching him. But, but there's times where, where you would see him, like you'll catch him on an Instagram live, and he's talking about the black community, the black community, the black community. He's not talking about women, but he's talking about the black community. Men has to do this. Men have to do that. Men got to make sure their credit is right. Men got to make sure they can lead a household that they able to lead a household. How how are they expect? How do they expect a woman to follow and lead? How do they expect a woman to follow if they can't lead? He used to preach that to guys all the time. He knew the if truth. Shit, like, the like truth. if your if your shit is not together, you you don't even have the right to even approach a woman. Like that was his mindset, and that's what he was trying to get through to a lot of these niggas, but they they didn't listen to that part at all. It wasn't they just money. it wasn't making no money for him, but they they wasn't listening to that part. Even when he tried to slide it in here and there, he already messed up the message because he done disrespected five black women before he got to that message. Mm. So, yeah, like I, I think his work wasn't done overall, but it is what it is. Like uh, you say, okay, so you say his work. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, a lot of work. He did a lot of work on YouTube, yeah. You know how that is. He did a lot of work on YouTube. You know that. I, I from, think from, that, from start, yeah. I think that it's, it sounds like he was trying to find that a balance of giving out, like, some real factual, you know, like, as far as what you was just saying about men and how they need to be, and then trying to add that salacious stuff to keep the numbers up. I think he was trying to probably find like a, a, a balance because I think that he did know that what he was saying was bull crap, but he know it paid the bills. So I think that he was not a term. You can't be happy doing that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like your, your spirit and your soul cannot be happy putting that type of garbage out. Unless yeah, he, he mentioned it a few hard. times. Oh, what he actually he mentioned it a few times. What did he say? It was like... To it's like towards the end of his show. He, he said that I'm paraphrasing, but he's basically saying like, I know that I'm doing this and I'm doing that, mm -hmm. but you know, as, as we go along, everything's going to make sense. Uh, and y'all believe that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I read, like, I saw talk about the same person that said that black woman's beauty stance was at the bottom of the bottom. This was the person y'all like, did we not hear that clip? Look, look, look! I don't agree with him a hundred percent at all. Mm -mm. I'm not. I'm not going to sit up here and defend him. To this feminine, girly ass man in the first place, he was not masculine at all. There's nothing about him that was masculine. No, uh, it wasn't. When I see his college, his college photos, it kind of, you know, he gives off a certain vibe, you know, to me. He was a cheerleader. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> this is the thing people are listening to about <laughs> masculinity. <laughs> He gives me, Let he me gives go me start me a cult so y'all can start paying me. Like, if that's all it takes is the bare minimum. Like, who are we talking about here? This clown? I think that um, he knew the truth. And like we you know, were saying, is that, he uh, clown. that he chose to bash women, of course, to make money. And, clown. Um, and I saw something, um, you know, and um, I forgot who it was, but she was just, I don't know, you know, people have this 
or speak on stuff. And um, I, I think his spirit or his soul was probably had some choices to make, you know, um, if he used to speak on saying that he know what he did was wrong and he chose to keep going down that path, you know, it, it, things, you know, went left and he, you know, his life just ended pretty early. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, 53. That early? That early. Yep. He had enough time to figure it out. He still think, decided well, it, to I do what he, he did. Yeah. I think he definitely had choices and um, he just wasn't living right. Uh, and I think he, he definitely wasn't happy. I'm not sure about the, the drug reports if that's out yet because um, there was some rumors around him using drugs, you know. So huh. I just that's that pack. You just can't. You not. I, I just don't. I just personally feel that if you're spreading that type of hate and rhetoric, you can. You're not a, a happy person, and you got some demons, of course, that you're dealing with. And if he know that he was telling the truth and that he was doing this just to make money, I believe that your conscience is also telling you you need to stop this. You need to stop this. And he just simply, you know, did it. He made the wrong choice. <laughs> I just don't like that he emboldened a bunch of a bunch of fatherless niggas that he was that a just fatherless nigga. Yeah, but <sighs> He 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 awoke in like a cult, like you said. He just awoke in a cult, and it's it's sad. Like it's they they out here. They on Twitter misspelling words, and I'm I'm not jumping out the window for them at all. <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm not going to. Isn't it? I think it's too. It's, it's ironic that a nurse was there. Like he had the right person there that could you know, possibly save his life, but it was really nothing she could do. You know what Didn't I mean? Like down on nurses? Yeah, he uh -huh. did. Yeah. yeah. He said he like, yeah, for marriage. Is it for marriage? Yeah. Because his his other uh, Yeah, he said they good to sleep with, but not good to marry. Mm -hmm. Because they keep long hours. Sleep and sleep on it. Well, he had somebody there that was doing CPR because if it was me, unfortunately, and it's not even, I couldn't help him. You know what I mean? I, 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 I need to learn it, but I don't know CPR. And I got a feeling a lot of people possibly don't know CPR, but he had somebody there that could give him CPR, but they still could not save his life. Yeah, his heart had to have been going. Like... I, I don't. He had to be on something. He had to. There, there's no way. Yeah. There, there's no way. <laughs> and did and I say because we didn't watch his clips, we didn't know him. Y'all don't know him. Y'all just know clips. You don't know everything that he does. Why do I have to watch every video of his to figure out his ideology? It was basic. I, I, did, I didn't say it was, watch it every was video. striking and, and, and big to bird brain people, but not to people with intelligence. He wasn't saying anything in any substance. Like, if this, is, if this is video. that low, this is the bar set that low. It's scary. He wasn't saying anything. Put a suit on. Y'all don't know that? Like, you really need a grown uh, ass uh, man uh, to teach uh, you how to be uh, a grown unfortunately, man? Unfortunately, a lot of niggas don't know that. Then I don't want because anything they to do with those because, niggas. Because they grew up in fatherless homes. And that needs to be addressed. You know what I mean? It, like, it do. I, it, it really needs to be addressed because they are turning to a uh, Kevin Samuels for their spirit, for their, for guidance. I don't want to say spirit, but for their guidance. And that's the wrong outlet for, you know, it's, black it's definitely wrong. Yeah. And because they're not, they're they not, they're not thinking for themselves. They're not experiencing the world. They are just sitting at a computer screen, taking in everything that this man has to say. And they, 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 they use, they, it, it, it's sickening. I mean, that's instead of going out there and living, the, what, yeah. what's excuses? Yeah. That's excuses. That's How is that excuse? That's, that's, that's the reality. Excuse. Everybody has a, a sob story. I went to prison twice. That has nothing to do mm -hmm. with me, me being a person and moving on my life. I don't let it. I don't let it wear me. 
Yeah, that's you. Like, what do you? It's just, it's just that's, currently that's clowning. You. Like, what are we talking this, about? That's, that's you. But this is social media. But these social are, media got, gathers. But it is. Exactly, like, come on, social wow. media gathers. Social media gathers gather people of the same uh, uh, of the same cloth. So he he grabbed a bunch of people from the same cloth, and it just so happened to be a lot of them clowns. A lot of clowns. That's that's what you want to call them. Clown simps, whatever. You're supposed to be an alpha male, but you got to follow another male to tell you how to be a man, and you're not an alpha male. If you a follower, you a sub. (laughs) <laughs> they 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 actually are alpha males, but that's a different story. I think it's just plugging into. <laughs> the then I'm an alpha male. It's yeah, it's plugging. I think it's just it, they're plugging yeah. into the wrong outlet for for with for guidance. The alpha male need and then they for guidance. People, a lot of people do that. You know what I mean. A lot of people they're looking for answers. They look in they for truth and for growth, and they turn to the wrong things for it. And I would be embarrassed know, to admit I needed advice. I, I think we all could use, you know, guys. We all need advice, right? But, but like having somebody literally follow you, like a like that's scary. Like you really need, like if the stuff they were saying, it was like a cult. If you all use the same words, you were in a cult. Yeah, no, you. That's You're in a cult. No, no, no. The same yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. That that's what I'm saying. You know, what I'm saying? They, they, they they you should never follow. Uh-huh. A nature boy, who's that? I mean, nature boy was basically the same. It's crazy. Oh, I don't know who that I'm is. Sorry for me to wrap my mind around stupidity. I don't understand, but hey, but it's not for me to understand. I can't wrap my mind around. Yeah, you if can't... you don't know who nature boy is, ain't nobody gonna be able to explain it to you in in five I minutes. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I just found him. <laughs> I'm gonna Born say here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a <laughs> just got arrested. He's work. He's the, the you know who cult Angela, leader. the leader of the BBW cult that I covered. He's mm-hmm. like the legitimate real version of her. Like all, everything that Angela's trying to be is what Nature Boy is. Like he really has a cult where these people are like he's taking advantage of the mentally ill. He's fucking them. They're having orgies. Wow. It's under the guy. It, it, it's bad. It's bad. bad. Everything that Angela okay. wants to be that she thinks she is, that's what Nature Boy really is. And that's why she was so psyched to get on the phone with him. And they've had a couple of like FaceTime calls or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's... that videos on your channel about it. I'll go back and watch it because I never heard of um, Nature Boy. Um, I you know, I don't. Yeah. I don't have videos on my channel about Nature Boy, and I wish I had the channel, the videos on my channel about Angela. But um, make sure you, you know, get your spirit right before you look at him. Yeah, Ugh. <laughs> it's dark. It's dark. Well, maybe I leave it alone. Then I never heard it's, of. It's sick, but yeah, he he away. has these people under his spell. He recent, I think he recently just had his bail hearing, and he was um, under under his spell. What are you talking about? It's not he really things. It's not different things. He really they were the same. like I'm telling you, AMK. He really had what Angela wants to have, Nature Boy really had. Like he's got these these women under his spell. They're like they're 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 having sex, they're listening to him. Um it, I can't I can't even explain it's nothing I, I can explain I can in five look- minutes. No, 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 no. Like you explained it with Angela. Like I follow Angela, so <laughs> it's really wilding. sick. Like he really went all the way up into the mountains because he felt like being in the mountains Ooh. would stop him from ever being held criminally responsible for it. But he was recently arrested and they haven't been letting him out. He was just denied um, you know, his bond. He went to different countries and all that to have these it's women. Natural. These women are fighting, you know, the women. Some of these people are mentally ill. Um, it's it's a nasty. There's a lot of sex involved, just like what Angela wants. You know, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. PPP I, loans. It's, yeah, it's it's terrible. It's the worst. Did you see that video of him dancing in the street? I I can, you know honestly, people ask me if I'm going to cover um nature boy and i'm like no i don't even want to it was bad enough to learn about angela and angela was a fake and i had to cleanse my spirit after mm-hmm. i got into <laughs> angela at 2 a.m and she was a fake 
I, I yeah. couldn't imagine getting into the real person and following those people who know all the people who are involved on a first name basis, velvet and this and that and not. I can't do. I'm, I'm a. I am a very sensitive person. I, I and I'm a very thorough reporter, so I can't report on anything and be very vague. So if I'm gonna get into the details, I need to get into what's really happening. And I, I couldn't imagine getting serious about Nature Boy. It's a lot because getting serious about Angela was bad enough, and she's a phony. She's out here buying fake cow blood to make it seem like. The girls ain't sent her enough blood, so she got to drink cow blood, but it's fake cow blood that she didn't got off Amazon. Like, bitch, you sick. You ordering fake cow blood off. Girl, you what? sick. And, and I got to cleanse my spirit after that, let alone and for she, some real she, shit. Mm-mm. Angela struggling with straps and shit. <laughs> Strap over the jog and stamp her tongue. Her, her tongue is rough. The girls are complaining about her tongue. Not you can't even throw the strap right. She can't throw the strap right. They was complaining about her strap motion. They said she put the strap over the joggers and they didn't like it and her tongue was rough. They said it was like a cat tongue, like sandpaper tongue. It will lick the skin off you. It's a mess. All over on TikTok. All over on TikTok. I can't believe I covered this TikTok cult, but I did. Wow. So it's not it's not like YouTube. They're not on YouTube, they're on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, they're on TikTok. Around 2 a.m. every morning. So if you want to see an action, if you want to see some, they really pray to her. They pray that they're gonna beat anybody. Like they they call her a god. She requires they wake up a certain time of day, send her their money. Um Yeah, like they make TikToks. They make TikToks praying to her. (laughs) How you call a woman daddy? I'm trying Mm -hmm. to manifest. I don't know. I'm trying to manifest. I don't know. Yo, listen, she happy. she be whooping their ass too. She a real bad. I think that some of that is fake. But again, Got it's you. like Angela. Like, and you can hear the whip. They're just like, oh, it's like she's whipping cattle. Like she owns a farm. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> Angela is out of pocket. Angela is. She is so out of pocket. I be watching. Yo, she her. told. She told the one Muslim lady, she was like, yo, why don't you got your Habib on? I can't. She was like, <laughs> Not with them husky you wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. Yo, like, I was like, why don't nobody pop on her? Like, what the hell? She's she out of pocket. soft to me. I don't even understand that. She don't Angela even like she is don't. so soft. That's why I'm like, she, anybody she, she's not dominated like that. It, by It's crazy. Angela? It's wild because oh, no. she don't look hard. She looks she at all. Got, she should have no. been got popped on. Like it's crazy. Like, <laughs> at all. Like yeah, girls like that. The tattoos in prison would have cleaned my room, washed my underwear out. Like you're not built washed like that. She's, you can look at her no. face, look at them contacts. It's you're not built like that. Washed yeah, you live in like not that. Not built like that. That might be the first video that came out of yours. Was the what first? Out of pocket for that shit. We got to figure out why these pocket. people, what's going what on do you in the gain from black that? people where we so lost where we just follow anybody. Like, that's what really needs to be talked about. Like, what is wrong with us? I think it's a- This is not the equality we ask for. Like, are we just now as weird as they are now? Yeah, I Listen, think- this is why I feel like the first step to reparation should be mental health. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying we shouldn't get money. What I'm saying is if we all got money, none of us would automatically go towards mental health. I feel like the first little portion of it should be mental health. I'm not saying that, oh, we shouldn't get reparations. Like, we shouldn't see a dime. We should just get, you know, mental health. But I'm saying, like, get, give us some free mental health first and then give us our money. Because you can drop $50,000 on every every Black or marginalized individual in America right now. I guarantee you most of those people ain't going to go to get mental health treatment first. They're going to pay bills, get lavish, buy shit, da 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 one thing that should be free to black folk if anybody is mental health. There's so many people accepting less than what they deserve than what they need. Mm -hmm. Accepting shit that is detrimental to them and their family that we we could benefit as black people from some free mental health help. And the high quality kind. So it's like the least y'all can do because y'all oppressed us is give us some help. And I, I feel like a lot of black people ain't going to want to hear that. But it's like, listen, we don't even take our physical health, let alone our mental health, serious enough 
to go get the. It's not until we got an arm falling off that we're going to go to the hospital. Like, mm-hmm. you could be damn near about to cut your finger off. You ain't going to go to the hospital just because that's, we, we just, we're just against it as a, as, mm-hmm. as a people. And, uh, if, if it don't seem like we about to die, we ain't going to the hospital. And that's literally seeing a limb be cut off, let alone mental health. Mental health is something that we need help with. If somebody has to force, and, and I hate to think that somebody has to force us, but somebody's got to force us to get the help that we need yeah. as Black people. How else is that going to happen unless we include it into what we are owed, which is reparations, which is give us the mental health first, and then two weeks later, bitch, give us a motherfucking check. Uh, hell, even if you make it to the point where we got to get the mental health help before we can get the check. Something. Yeah. But we need that. We need that. We do. I totally agree. I mean, just after sitting on, um, you know, not sitting, but just looking <laughs> online this weekend and just seeing the back and forth over um, Kevin mm. Samuels was just really uh, disappointing and um, eye-opening. You know, cause yeah, it, it really was eye opening because, uh, like, I, I didn't think that it was so many niggas out here that that, <laughs> that hung on every word this man said. I really didn't think that. And how everybody came though to that talking point. Like, even if you did not watch Kevin Samuels, you still had people. I feel like who who just heard maybe about you know his death who came and just added on to, oh, we shouldn't be celebrating. You know, like, they just immediately jumped to that tagline and started and joined in to attack, you know, Black women. Um, and that was just very disappointing. And it was other Black women, you know, calling um, people who did not like them, you know, be, you know, bees and stuff. I'm like, really? Over Kevin Samuels? You know what I mean? And it's, and it's we need help. Yeah, because the second you start making sense, to these niggas, the second you start making sense, all of a sudden you're a bitch, or you you you're a simp. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, or you caping for them? Like what? Like you serious? Like whatever. <laughs> hurts. You know that's all I kept on hearing. Your truth hurts. You don't want to take accountability, and it's just like, what? Have you heard what this man says? And why do I have to? Why do I have to sit there and listen to? look past the mess the messenger to get to the message or look past that type of stuff to get to the I shouldn't have to sit there and 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 and, and put my spirit through that type of stuff to hear the rest of what he got to say. That's how you get brainwashed when you sit there and you don't um see you, you, when you sit there and you hear garbage and you keep on listening repetition, to it. repetition. Yes. That's how you that's how you get indoctrinated with garbage. Cool. That's a cult. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got to have like a real strong bit- mind to not be influenced. You bitter, you left over. Oh, you might be triggered. Nah, I just don't care about the dude. I, feel I never like- checked for him. Why would I check for somebody like that? That's why. Why I would really- you call in and embarrass yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a lack of self love. When you need to call in to hear this guy talk to you like garbage. Because, like, because, look because they, look at, they, look at, they looking for a father figure. Yeah. From what I got it watching, they looking for a father figure. They looking for a uh, an older man to tell them what they need to do. Yeah. I mean, it's between them looking for an older man to tell them what to do and an older man that they can tell that shouldn't be telling them what to do. No, yeah, I understand we that. Like yeah. to, we, we, we like to tell people in general, but especially older men who want to tell us what to do. We like being able to tell him, like, listen, you can't tell us what to do. And here's why. Because here go my words. You don't think my words mean shit? Cool. But your words don't mean shit either. And it's just a matter of letting him know. Because, you, you know, you will tell an older man, I don't agree with this. Well, you just talking shit. Okay, well, what do you think you talking is? Mm-hmm. Shit. So, you know, sometimes, again, it's that challenge of, you know, telling somebody what you saying ain't shit, especially because you about to tell me that what I'm saying ain't shit. But what I'm saying is just in response to you, what you saying wasn't shit, you know. So, yeah, but at some point we got to let go of that desire of mm-hmm. wanting to prove because that is ultimately what made Kevin Samuels relevant is the collective outrage of and the black ego. women. In the black community, yeah, yeah, 
Because that's the first he time. Pimp home mentality to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just he's he they very fussy. He was a very fussy man. Yeah, he was really, really, really sassy. <laughs> very <laughs> sassy. Like I said, I saw the college pictures and I was like, mm, I think brother I, man. It was the collar pop for me. That's what did it for me. It was the collar up. I said, okay. Yeah, yeah he was definitely like funny style at one point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He was like funny 80 style 80. at every point. It's just he realized <laughs> I'm funny style in every single way that I look. Let me just wear suits every day and I can't be looked at as funny that style. I stole that from way. Sat- <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wasn't even allowed to come in the stores. Come on. It's a con artist. Yeah, but my, con my whole artist. thing is. I ain't mad at him, I guess. You gonna pay me? Hey. He <laughs> gone. Show it's it. just some of this, a, a lot of these a lot of these guys, man. They just don't. I, yeah. I don't understand how they don't realize why black women are mad, or why black women like they 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 happy that he off the earth. They don't care. They they don't care. They don't care to understand either. They don't care. That's the issue. Like, literally don't care. Yeah. It didn't make them feel good. He made them feel good. He said it himself. He tried to talk which is about fucking, money. Which is fucking weird. He that said it. Gro- that another man <laughs> that you put up the zestiest picks, huh? Yes. <laughs> no, because it's the point. It's the point. The whole point is when he's not wearing a suit, he looks you better. Pose. He got a whole purse. He got a whole purse. Overall, <laughs> mother kitten heels. <laughs> House of <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> when he's not wearing a suit, he can't prove that re- that he's good at picking out outfits for men. So he said, "You know, every time he stepped out with something that wasn't a suit, he called himself trying to be daring and bold." People, uh, people was like, well, "Oh, well, look at that!" Then he realized he said, "Okay, well, let me just stick with the suit." So he was good at the suit, the tie, and the fit, and. Um, you know, making sure it, it it you know fit individually to you as a the customs, the customs. Yeah, yeah, he got he, the money he to was get good customs. At that. And so he said, "Let me go back." He he thought he was a good just stylist all around. No, he realized he was only good at the suit thing, and that's why he only wore a suit. You got anybody in a suit is going to be more respected than somebody in jeans. It don't, or, or or uh you know a Manila jacket. <laughs> Yeah. That's the reason why he exactly. presented himself that way. He wasn't that, that, skilled in, in the other departments. Yeah, that's why we go to court with suits on. Look at <laughs> and be these like, Hello? Judge, I don't indulge in those activities. <laughs> Hello. I'm a productive citizen. Yeah. Like, how you present yourself, I mean, you know, like I said, um, I don't know if I did mention it, I, you know, I do work in fashion. It it plays a, a huge role, you know, like how, how you walk into the room and how you look, it, it it can automatically have people gravitating towards you immediately. And, um, you know, he was articulate, you know, in his own way, you know, he was able to hold a conversation. So, um, unfortunately, those little two <laughs> um, good things, I guess, about him being able to look good in a suit and talk to people, you know, it got him in the door and got him in the door. And he figured out how to manipulate people. Wow. All it took was a, a, a proper I, sentence in the suit. Yeah. I the can't bar wait. is low. If he was really broke, though. The bar is in hell. It's in hell. Like, the bar is below hell. Because I'm just looking at these pictures. I've never seen that first one. Like, really? That's the guy that, that was the <laughs> man that y'all wanted to mm-hmm. teach you how to be a man with this... Hermes belt and this Louis Vuitton purse and this scarf. Mm-hmm. He, looked, he looks look like, like a teenage elder. A teenage elder. <laughs> yeah. Just the blind leading the blind for me. Yeah. Yeah. And how they so homophobic but don't care for okay. Yeah, they, they over they will overlook everything. Oh, it doesn't change the fact that he told the truth. What truth? Watch it. Yo, watch this. If that talk screen comes out that, you know, he was using all the drugs and everything else, watch, they're going to have an excuse for that. They're going yeah. to move the goalposts. 
Or how about if he was broke? I'm hearing that he... They, they said that. I'm they hearing said, he was broke, too. Yeah. That he had a stack in his name. Now, that one, I don't believe for some reason, because I'm not sure how I don't believe it either. Hurt, but I'm like, yeah. well, a lot of followers. I would think that he would, uh, you know, have some money coming in. So his membership... His memberships was like a hundred dollars each. His yeah. just like crazy. I was watching the lead, and he was saying that he was charging for like thousands of dollars for cons. Yeah, I don't think he was broke. Consultations and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm in the wrong business, right? Uh, it's, I got I, wow. This the new. This the new got, fake You got to find your niche. That's all. You just you know. Damn. <laughs> But I just want to say thank you. Um, Yo, that, that iPhone filter. <laughs> the, that's the bad bitch post. What's the proper name to, to call Yo, you? Yo, that filter is crazy. <laughs> What's the proper name to call you? The, the plain is Jane? Oh, yeah, you can call me Jane. Look Jane. at him. Uh, thank you for having me. This was my first live stream. And um, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm going to log off, but I just wanted to say um, when you did your coverage on um, what Derek Jackson, um, I was so impressed with how you was able to track down the church. Like you did some digging <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, cause you was like really the first no. one I see that really, um, I think most like what church they was, that they went to and just some like really, behind the scenes information and I was like this girl really knows um what she's doing and I'm um, just much respect to you and um thanks for having me on your stream tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through. You know they are still together. Um I know that it was reported that they were like breaking up because he ain't shit and da da da. Uh, but they're together because believe it or not I still be um you know peeking in. You know that was one of those stories that put me on the map that R. Kelly Jaguar right, so on and so forth. So I still check in from time to time. I do have receipts. They are together. And I um I'm, I'm not sure if I let my channel members know already, but if not, I'll post it on the community tab between today and tomorrow. Nah, um I'm not surprised if girl was gone. In my opinion. My opinion. A girl. That's another one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> With the bonnet of strength, right? Yeah, like the yeah, like your bro, She said her bonnet like was you can't let people, you got to be careful with who you let get into your head. That's and true. You got to let, you got to be careful who you let get into your head. And um, I don't know, a lot of people, it, it, and sometimes the manipulation is slow. And, yeah. you know. I think, I think she was running that relationship. Uh, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think she was low key running it in a way that she I, I I feel like they both was getting away with shit. I feel like she was running it in a certain way, and there's a certain leverage that you have when you are the victim, right? Because the person that has been um, you know abusing you, however, whether it be physical, emotional, psychological, whatever, the victim has that power because the victim is always about to walk out the door, and so if you're about to walk out the door and somebody's trying to get you to stop you have the power well i'm gonna leave if this or if that which gets yeah. the the perpetrator to jump through hoops to try to get you to not so yeah i do think that she was running it to an extent but i do still think that that derek was um was getting over on her to she some was extent. Like, i mean too though right she was like man derek was trying to find an outlet in his car doing lives, and he doesn't even want to walk in his house <laughs> because she's walking around spitting Bible verses and with his keyboards <laughs> and, and the Bible verses and everything else with the bonnet. Like, with the bonnet, yeah. She the bonnet. She, she, she be powerlifting too. Oh my god. <laughs> there's so. still, uh, you know, posting about the Bible with the swords. Um, they posted something not too long ago with the kid, and she tagged him in a post lately. So um, if you all want the explanation, if you want the receipts about Derek Jackson and Danae Jackson still being together, that'll be backstage. I know a lot of people felt like um, I was reporting on him too much when I started covering it. They were uh, like, oh, I'm not subscribing. You're talking about him too much. And I'm like, no, you went, went. I'm a reporter. So when there are updates and things. 
Like, I'm going to report, but like, what would I look like if I felt like I was reporting on Kevin Samuels too much? Like, oh, I've already spoke about him two times this week. Let me like chill out. Like, no, there are updates to the story and I need to provide that. If you feel like it's a bit much, if you, um, th then you can go subscribe to somebody else. However, some of the larger people that you would subscribe to, you will realize that they also display the type of numerical obsession with wanting to talk about somebody more than two times a week because that's either where the trend and topic lies or that is how the story is developing. So get with it or yeah. get lost. This is your <laughs> it's not personal business. <laughs> like, yeah. It sure is. Wow. That is just what it is. But listen, thank you so much. Is it Miss Sai? Am I saying it right? Miss Sai? Yes, Miss Sai. Um, I was going to put my um, my full name in, but I got shy. This was my first um, time. <laughs> Um, streaming or whatever you want to call this um, but I just became so um, I don't know just um, engulfed I guess you will with this the reaction and just this whole thing and just I'm just so I'm just so dismayed in a way how people are just so blind and how they just ignore truth and evidence that's right there in front of their face you know like I, I just don't see the passion in, in, in defending him and his mm -hmm. I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand how they villainize women for not liking this dude. And it's just mm -hmm. really sad that within our community that they do this. It really is. It, it really is. It's like, what can we do? We can't do anything but strategically survive. Strategically keep speaking our peace, but not speaking our peace, uh, you know, out in public because they might be trying to. All right. Mm. Get us out. So that's why I'm like, I'm grateful that I have this safe space here. But even so, every now and then I, I get I get recognized outside, and I be trying to play. Like, they be like, "Do I know you from somewhere?" No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Next, they be like, "But I think I know you. You don't know me from anywhere." Keep it. Special. They come up to me through a third time. Like, I know you. You talked about R. Kelly. I'm like, all right, all right, all keep, right. What? Especially the fools out there where you at. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So. Like we we gotta be careful, but at the same time, we can't be pumped out of speaking about things that affect us right. as black women. So right. you know, I try to keep it respectful. You know what I'm saying? With how I feel about Kevin Samuel, he was, um, you know, his a lot of his philosophies were a piece of shit. That's how I feel. Yeah. But I'm not celebrating um, his demise. So it's just like we gotta be careful. I know I'm. I can be pretty bold, right? Even seeing this danger group, I wouldn't want like if I had a daughter who was. 11 years old or whatever, I wouldn't want her saying the shit that I'm saying about Kevin Sam because I feel like, girl, you're going to get yourself killed, especially considering the screenshots that I showed. It's like, stop. You need to go out in public and act like you don't know who he is. And if I was a public, honestly, I would act like I, I, I don't know who he is. Yeah. But even me being online saying what I say without being uncensored, I could very easily go out in public and be recognized. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to take that risk because like not to say who am I, but it's just like if you gonna take me out over that, like you really sick and like you sick, yeah. and, and that's why I I say I'm I'm really am nervous, lightweight about where this energy is gonna go now that this man is not online no more because we have seen his energy manifest in real life. Mm -hmm. We have seen this, you know, we have seen it. We have seen it, like you know, in New York with that guy. You know, people, guys quoting his um, rhetoric in their own personal lives. So this 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 stuff is out the out the coop, you know. So now that he's he's not here, where are they going to put that energy at? They they don't know, and that's the well, thing. Like when 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 men are lost and they are just scared. emotionally unsure. Like, they really be wilding out sometimes. So it is concerning. Like, where is it going to lie? And we have to think about, like, in the long run, as Black women, like, what's what's about to happen? Mm -hmm. I think that there is something dangerous for us to come as, uh, you and know, as Black women, and especially for people like me who create content. Oh, my God. Could you imagine the men who just feel like, oh, this pretty ass Black woman don't agree, or, or even if they don't feel like I'm hell, they can feel like I'm ugly. They can feel like I'm fat because I got a little, little, little second chin right here. Whatever. 
oh, she, don't, you know, the hate is going to multiply. Something yeah. serious. We have to make sure that we're ready for that. And, and in a cyber world like this, but also in real life, just going out to the bar, having a good time, getting to know somebody. And for me, I know when I was single, I really enjoyed talking about trending topics, what I liked, what I didn't like, my opinion. It's what makes me me. It's how opinionated and passionate I am. I couldn't imagine feeling like I'm about to be getting to know niggas, but I got to be careful with the Kevin Samuels opinion because a nigga might cause harm. But this is how these niggas is really feeling, though. Like, that's an odd time. Where's Jesus? The, start the rapture. I was just, Drop me off at Mars because this shit is out of pocket. I was just going to say this. It, it, <laughs> that energy coupled with the, that we, you know, that's not that we have to worry about. There's other groups <laughs> out there that we have always seen. My gosh. It, it, it's just a lot. It's a lot going on. It's just a lot going on right now. It's a lot. Who said how old was who? I did. How old was dude? That wasn't he like sixty? Who? I which one? That shot up the subway station. Wasn't yeah. he? Like the yeah. Senior yeah. Citizen. And yeah. I heard Frederick, and it woof. Yeah, it it made me feel like I was crazy. I had to cut it off. Yeah. Yeah, there was some people who hit me up like, "Listen, I watch all your videos, but I couldn't finish watching this." Yeah, I, I, I literally, I'm the same way. I, I cut yeah. it off. I said I can't do this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm literally feeling like I'm going nuts. Like, what is he talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uncle Ruckus and Kevin Samuels combined together. Yeah. And he was older than Kevin Samuels. Listening to him? Yeah. Yeah, he where's was a lost nigga. Where's the conscience? Nigga. Where's the self-guidance? Like, I'm just confused. With like, you really need a person outside of yourself to tell that, you what to what? Like, that's that, crazy. Yeah. And they, they don't... Hey, hey Jane, I gotta get going. Well, I appreciate you calling through AMK Media. For those of you all, is, is this the name of your main um, channel or is it Famecom Network? Famecom Network. They could just put in Famecom and it comes right up. Okay, cool. You all be sure to follow Famecom Network. Um, he has some really good things in store and he's always got something that's either going to get you, you bothered, something that's going to get you riled up. Um, but I've learned to agree to disagree with this fellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For yeah. sure. Thank you so much. Have a good night, um, AMK. All, All right, right, you too. All right. I'm gonna go. It's like that, like at the family's house. You know how you be saying bye. <laughs> we be like bye. It, it takes so long to like, say bye, bye child. Bye, Three minutes say later, bye. we be like bye, bye. And you know what? <laughs> One more <thing>. yeah. <laughs> Let me say. Um, bye officially. Um, and um, I hope to do it again. I really had a, a good time. I, I did. And it's good I, to talk to people, you know? It is good. It was amazing and really breathtaking to have you up here. I appreciate it. I wouldn't mind if you became a friend of the show. I appreciate you clicking the link and calling in. It definitely added some spice and some flavor to the show. And I think that all the people in the chat really appreciated you as well. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and get on off of here myself, but I'll drop you down. Thank you so much, miss. Um, miss um, how, do, how do I become a friend to the show? Um, you can become a channel member. It's just one ninety nine. There's a Discord okay. that we have where we talk all day about trending topics. And if there's something you feel, and especially even if you disagree with me, that's fine. I really enjoy speaking with people who disagree with me, and I don't mind showing people the art of agreeing to disagree and having discussions with folks who don't see things your way. So, um, join the channel. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. It's also the first link or the second link, actually in the description box. Um, and I look forward to talking to you. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed night and um, right. have a good week. <laughs> no problem. You too. All righty. And then we've got, according to Angel, left on here the second night in a row. I appreciate you joining the show for the second time. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, you know what? I really do thank you for last night as well. I know that um, you felt like it was an emotional, uh, you know, situation, but 
really it wasn't. It was something that I appreciated. I, I, I sensed your emotion and there was some stuff I actually sensed in myself as well. So that's why I felt like the two of us, we, um, I felt like we handled it really well. There were some things that you were feeling in real time. There were some things that I was feeling in real time. And it wasn't like anger mm -hmm. about you or what you were thinking. It was about the way that I just, I just went live without putting too much thought into it. And I'm like, yo, I should not have went live like this to address this community. And um, I felt a little nervous about it. I ain't even gonna stunt. Like I felt a little nervous about, um, you know, Going live about that. I you did the right want... thing. Somebody got to say it. Yeah. And now <laughs> I'm sure that I continue the conversation because it needs to be said because we got them so shook and so scared to act and be just being combative. Like, mm -hmm. you didn't know. I wasn't trying to be rude and I was never mad at you. It was just like, she, sis, really don't know that it's not kumbaya over here. Like, she really doesn't know. I could get how it could really come across that we're all on one accord, but we don't think of like, just like mm -hmm. the white, the white straights, do you speak for them? You can't control what white straight people do, and I can't control what white gay people do. There's never like it's just so dumb. Like when you really think about it, it's, it's a group. It's not a it's not a community. We shouldn't even be grouped together in the first place. So now I want to start speaking to some black and queer people and figure out do we still want to be in this group? Yeah, and that's my thing. I'm like, look, if I can oh, let me get this thing bot that came in with all that sex oh, with bullshit. The, with the... Um, my whole thing is like, look, I got a platform. It's influential. It ain't as influential as it was before when I had 102,000 subs. But with the influence that I have now, the influence that's going to continue to grow and build, I am more than willing to share my platform with folks who are willing to speak out and distinguish themselves against the folks who are coming in and abusing y'all's community. And I'm like, whether it's, pe people need to get the message, period, point blank. Whether they straight, da da da. You need to know how to protect and who to look out for. Because um, if, if at the end of the day, if it's a, a, you know, a ghetto or an internet bolo, you know what I'm saying? Um, all points bulletin, then you're going to need more than just the LGBT community to do that. And I'm just like, how, how can I be at, how can I be an ally? How can I be an assistance? I would love to lend my platform to calling out anybody who's harming children, regardless of what shield or what bullshit they're using to hide under. How can I help? And the only way I can help is by knowing other people in the media who are calling it out, who, like, who is just frequently being like, this is who don't need to be here. This is who need to be There's here. There's one woman, she's white, she's trans. Her name is Blair White. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about reaching out to her. She's the only person really talking about it. She even talks about detransitioning. But as far as mm. black people, nobody black. Because black people really don't even know what's going on. I learned about the maps from her. Mm. Black, black gay people minding their business. They don't know nothing even about that these people are trying to hijack. Because we don't have anything to really do with that. We don't, we're, we don't even really associate with them. Like I said, black pride, white pride. There's pride and there's black pride. Mm -hmm. We don't... We don't talk like that. That's them doing that. They We literally don't know. Most black mm. queer people are not privy to the fact that these people are trying to hijack the community and, and make it seem like pedophilia is a sexual preference. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Mm -hmm. And y'all so scared of us. Like we not your family, like we not your cousins, like we not your sisters, like you don't got an Uncle Peaches. You know us. We got to get past that point because somebody, the second person you spoke to, she really said that when you gay and black, you get more help. What? No, you don't. It's worse for you over there because you can't go back home because they just think that we just in this group. Of, like, I ain't black. It doesn't work the same way for me. Like, anytime that you, you say, oh, you can call the president. Yeah, because white gay men want stuff. Anytime a white man wants something done, it's going to get done. Them laws have nothing to do with us. It's about them and what they want. Look how fast Caitlyn Jenner was able, able to become woman of the year. They don't care about my black ass. But I don't want people to think I'm complicit because I'm not. I am not with that. I am not okay with that. 
And it's going to be a lot of people that are going to be upset with me because they think that we all supposed to be on code. But I, I can't deal with that. I can't be on code. Like, this is very serious. You don't even know how important it really was for you to do that last night. Like, you really struck something in me. You did that first with the Milwaukee video. Like, that really, really made me feel like, wow. But that one right there last night, I, I hung up at first. I called first, and I was getting mad. I was like, no, nah, I got to call back. That Milwaukee video, I got so emotional. I wanted to yeah, leave no, that one too. Me, too. <laughs> I got so emotional because, you know, I had been through a lot of what her child had been through that she was, Same. Um, you know, exploiting unnecessarily, right? Because you can punish your child without letting the whole World Wide Web know about it. And it's just like, yo, I was, I, I read away well over 15 times. I had to. It wasn't because of physical abuse. It was because of emotional abuse. And um, yeah, I was really emotional in that video. And a lot of people peeped it. I would say about like 75, 80% of the people was was fucking with how I felt. 20% uh, uh, of people called me out for being emotional in that video. And I'm like, yo, well, that just lets you know that I'm human. Like I, I'm, I'm a commentator. I'm an inter uh, entertainment journalist, but I'm also human too. And what this black mom did to her child in front of the world. So that's the difference between doing things to your child and doing things to your child in front of the world in a manner in which it can't be deleted in today's world. It's not like your parent coming up to the school and beating your ass in front of the class of 30. Because it was only those 30 people that saw it. And there was no camera phones, no nothing. But when you're putting shit on the internet on purpose to add insult to injury to how you were trying to discipline your child, there's a lot to be said there about that behavior. That's a different level of narcissism. I can honestly say that if if that type of technology was available to my mom when I was growing up, she would have absolutely done that to me. She was just cruel as fuck. And so that's why it was easy for me to call her out and see in her what I saw in my <laughs> in my parent and my upbringing. And I took that video personal. And I'm like, I'm human. I'm not going to take it back and apologize and be like, oh, I didn't have an emotional moment. Y'all either think I'm some sort of PR computer because I'm good at, at PR and strategy and this. Or you think I'm real. like, And this is just, that was just one of those videos where I'm like, y'all either know I'm real or you don't. I was very triggered by that video. And I said that several times in a lot. I'm like, I'm triggered. I'm triggered by this because I very much was. So. It was what it was. Mm. Um. I wish I, you know, I probably could find that video a little bit later on. I wish that was one of those recorded videos that I could re-upload. <sighs> but it's not, it's not. But nonetheless, I figure, honestly, as a Black woman, uh, being triggered out in public seems to be more of a vulnerability than anything. It makes me want to do it less. And thank you so much to a um a side for joining the channel membership i think you were just on the panel um i i find that being triggered as a black woman it, it sucks because if it seems as though we are um uh, we have less safe spaces because um being triggered out in public it makes you so vulnerable people know what buttons to press how to press them when to press them um And like, when can we really be emotional without people using those emotions as ammo to really uh, get under our skin and throw us off balance? If that makes it, we're off balance when we are straight triggered and just in that place of, of emotion. So um, as a content creator, and, and I love to, to be transparent and have some moments where people can understand like love. I'm a real person. I'm like, if there's anything that can show y'all that I'm a real person, it's the fact that I literally had 102,000 subscribers and YouTube deleted my channel. And here I am sitting on this low ass channel with 4,000 subs. I'm like, listen, I'm a real person. And I had to be gone for a couple of weeks to even accept that I had to start over again. I'm like, yo, I've been on YouTube since 2010. <laughs> And I had 100,000 subs. And now I got to start over again in front of all y'all. I'm like, if there's no other example, this is the example. 
However, I'm hoping that it's not even that I'm hoping it's that I'm not going to share my personal life because people love more personal details about you and your life in order to get a feel for how real you are or how real you aren't. And I'm look, I, I'm, I'm transparent enough to let you know that I'm human. You can see it in certain videos. You can see it in certain experiences that I let shine through. Other than that, I'm making my content and I'm going on about my business. I hope that makes sense. All the sense. <laughs> I hope it. Makes and like sense. I said, I, I started talking to a couple of my friends. I said we got to start speaking out because people don't understand that we don't feel this way. Mm -hmm. They really think that we all think the same, and that's scary. That's scary. I appreciate you saying that because I had no. And I was talking to another homegirl who's a part of the community, and she was also telling me like, "Look, I'm a black woman first. All that other shit." Mm mm. And I was like, I, I, I had no clue, but it's it's refreshing to know so that I can put it into my Rolodex of understanding so that when I give commentary about certain things and certain people, I know how to, because honestly, the commentary that I would give or my perspective was that y'all are kumbaya, y'all get the whole, y'all be having meetings. I, I had no clue that it was. There was so much other stuff behind y'all not being as together as it maybe it seems. But look at it though. Why would we have a black pride? We don't mm -hmm. even party with each other. And if you catch some white people at black pride, it's because they're there looking for pieces of black meat. Mm. It's no different. I know you heard of Ed Buck. Mm. They run stuff everywhere. It's no different. At this point, I'm trying to figure out what year did we become a community and maybe it's at this point it's expired. It's not the way anymore. We got to start. Maybe we just have to separate ourselves. Like I said, the word is community is a joke. It's a joke to me. We don't respect each other. We all don't think the same. Why are we all in a group? You want to be technical, being trans is not even a sexuality. That's mm. a gender thing. So why are we even over here? Why are y'all even over here with, you, with, with us? It doesn't even make any sense. My best friend is trans. She'll say the same thing. It's just confusing. Gen being gender nonconformant makes no sense. They're hijacking the whole movement. The trans people didn't even get their rights first. Now you're talking about there is no gender? Well, what would be the purpose? in the transition if there was no gender make that make sense if there's no gender why are you paying for hormones why would you if, the, if there's no point it's like a contradiction and I'm just tired of it it's annoying oh no you can't say that I can say whatever I want to say to the point where I don't even want you to say certain words anymore like when did this word not be what, I can't say that no more. it's ridiculous I'm over it. You did absolutely the right thing. Don't delete that video for what? Because somebody going to get mad? So? Somebody always going to be mad. I was mad. Then I thought about it. They really don't know. We It was so it's sad to the point where we really have got to the point where y'all are scared to ask us questions. Not scary. Because we are y'all. You are us. We're all the same. We all have the same plates. Literally, we're going through the same thing. I'm over it. It's, they don't uh, want quality. They want privilege. I remember when it used to be, when you was queer, it, you were considered... I liked it better when we was being stoned. <laughs> I liked it better when it was underground. Because now it has went mainstream, it's ridiculous. Look at all these people that have joined. It's crazy. It really is sad. Because I'm thinking, like, wouldn't that be common sense? But you're an intelligent woman, so apparently it's not. 
y'all really thought that we was cool with each other like that. As a, and the crazy called a community. <laughs> what can you? I'm like, if 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 it was the opposite, you would think that there would be. There's not a lot of outcry. I, I've now realized, like after today's show and talking to a couple of other people and calling them up. They're like, no, there is. But I'm like, how how was anybody supposed to know there's no sense of community or y'all feel like y'all are at the bottom of the totem pole or, you know, there's a difference between black and white gays. And, and first of all, black women are going to fall at the bottom of the totem pole, whether it's heterosexual or not. Even in the heterosexual sphere, black women fall at the bottom. You've got sexism and misogyny and all that stuff, you know, so you've got white privilege and then you've got misogyny where just men are gonna win so you add the sexism with the colorism black women are always gonna be at the bottom but you know for some reason when it came to the you know lgbt community it just again based on who i watch right and and the black people who have semi made it or are more visible than others the impression that i got was that there was some some sort of unity um you know between you all and not to say it's refreshing to know there isn't it's refreshing to know that i know the truth as opposed to the the you know the facade that's now that I realize what I've been digesting has been a facade. It's like damn, I'm I'm glad I know the truth. It's also not my community to want to fix. Yeah, yeah. It's not my community to want to fix, but I can't lie and say that there's not something that I want to do about it. Um, but it's not my community, and I realize there's nothing that I can't. Just like an Asian person wouldn't be able to come in and fix black problems. Um, so. All I can do is try to extend the voice of the community because I do care about it. And uh, everybody that's a part of the community, the major, all the people that I've known growing up, ain't none of them ever been in the kids like that. But they've been a part of the community. So I'm like, damn, how do my friends protect themselves? That's what I'm wondering. But I'm wondering the right way to ask my friends, you know, the people that I grew up with in middle and high school. Who are part of the LGBT community, but I know they're not creeps to the point where they like kids. So it's just like I want to know how are my friends relying on separating themselves from this type of nasty, sick behavior? Damn. And and whatever it is, I'm like, how can I help? I'm like, I have a voice, little little teeny voice. How can how can I help echo whoever the hell is already speaking? Even if the person that I'm asking the question to isn't the person speaking, if they point me in the direction, how can I help Echo? Because I love calling out pedophiles. And I I fell in love with calling out pedophiles when I was covering the R. Kelly trial. It was like, oh, this feels good. I can make somebody feel like shit. I can talk shit about somebody that deserves to be talked shit about because the nerve of you to put kids in danger. So... I, I love calling pedophiles. So I'm like, how can I call out these pedophiles? Because they're using the cloaks of the community. And so I just want to help. And that's why I'm asking these questions. But also, I want my friends to have protection. And I see that there's a lot of people coming. Oh, we part of it. We part. I don't want my friends being labeled that way. Because there are a lot of people coming over there. Claiming that they're part of the community. And really, you just fucking pedophiles. You're just using a certain label. So a weirdo. Yeah, it's it's just weird shit. And so I, I just want to help dismantle the bullshit. That's it. And that's why I'm asking these specific questions. Yeah, you was doing your job. I understood. I wasn't offended at all. I was just so mad that it's like, wow. Because months ago, I found out about the maps. I found out about them because of a white girl. It's this white trans woman named Blair White. B-L-A-I-R-E. White. And she breaks it down. She's the only person I see talking about it. But most of these people have no idea what's going on. These black mm -hmm. people don't know this. They don't know this. We're not privy to this. I just keep my ears. I watch a lot of weird stuff. I want to know everything. That's why I know. But majority of my friends, I'm the one telling them about these maps and what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And we just look at it like, oh, that's white people shit. 
But now I'm realizing y'all think we all cool. Yeah, so we that's did. the problem. That's a problem. That is exactly what we thought. But the problem is y'all don't got to speak for white people. When white people do weird stuff when they straight, y'all don't got to be responsible for them. If no, we don't got to be responsible, gotta, but we'll call it out, though. We'll call right, it but what out. I'm, what I'm saying is, no, you, you, I'm, not, I'm not explaining my point right. What I'm trying to say is, isn't it crazy that, isn't it really crazy when you think of it? It's like, what do we have in common, for real? Why do why are we even grouped together? It's like they just all, all the weirdos, all the alternative people just go over there. We we don't know what to do with y'all. Like if you really think about it, what does tr being trans have to do with being gay? That's a gender. That's a gender situation. That's gender dysphoria. It has nothing to do with a sexuality because you could be trans and still want to date. I know some people that went from man to woman and still date women. That's what my friend said earlier. That's that's the only reason why I'm kind of smile because my friend said that earlier. She was like, "If I can take anybody out of our community, it would be." Although she admits that there is no sense of community, but then she ended up saying, "If I could take anybody, I'm like, right. it would be the trans because they don't consider themselves to be gay. They turn into whatever they decide they want to classify as, and then they're attracted to the opposite of what they classify as. They don't even they don't even consider themselves to be, you know." And I'm well, like, "Somebody mm. gay too." They have they have gay ones too. I, you look at uh Dwayne Wade's daughter. She's dating a trans man. So then you have that as well. It's just too much. And at this point, we just need to go ahead and get a divorce. Mm -hmm. It's time to separate. It's time to just realize there is no community. We got to speak out. Because this is unacceptable. I have nothing to do with people wanting to be with kids. But it's not just the gays, because euphoria over, that's a show about kids. That's over-sexualizing children. It's just mm -hmm. in general. That's where we headed. People are over-sexualizing kids. And the people that run, the people that hold the gates, they're the ones that want to do that. That's the real messed up part about it. The ones that make these laws run to that. It's terrible. I look they don't over feel like going. bisexuals. Who done? It's so much fighting going on in between that quote unquote community. I'm just gonna say group. We're a group. There's there's group members that don't like me. They say I should choose who I want to be with. So you telling me as a gay person, I gotta do what I gotta do. I could do whatever I want to do. Isn't that what you want to do? Whatever you want to do. It's getting to the point where we make the rules. We want privilege, not equality. That's the same way I feel about black people. I feel like about black men, mostly. You don't want equality. You want to be able to be a white supremacist. You want to make the rules. You want to run things. That's what y'all want. You want everybody to think like you. I thought the whole reason why we was over here because we wanted to do what we wanted to do and be ourselves, not because I want you to think like me. I don't want you to think like me. And this is this is new. This is within the past. I've seen it past five years it has changed drastically you did the right thing i'm you glad i'll continue the right person but you i are. just i i want to do it in a more strategic way and i would love to have um you know more than one person up at different letters more than, <laughs> it, you know honestly for me it doesn't matter about the letters i just want I feel like if it's just me and one other person, it's just um, the conversation is limited to how they feel. And I feel like that can't possibly be the representation of more of the community if it's just one person. I just feel like the more the merrier, especially because I'm not a part. It'd be if, like, if I was a part, then it'd be like, okay, we got two different, you know, so I feel like it would just be best to have as much representation of different perspective. I don't give a shit if everybody was a damn L or B or I don't give a shit as long as it's more than one opinion. I feel like it's just a bit more fair as opposed to one person's opinion reigning supreme over, you know, what people are exposed to. So that is the goal. I have a couple of different people in mind, but I, I couldn't imagine everybody's going to be free at the same time as, um, you know, with the friends that I have, they all got different lives and things going on 
but I'm going to try my best to see if there are others um, because I would love to have a panel of, of several and not, you know, um, and seeing what people think about it together and having um, a certain amount of questions and scenarios. Cause honestly, last night was just, it was just, it was just last night. It wasn't anything that had too much thought put into it. And I feel That's like, well, yeah, I, I felt like it was bold. Right. But I was, I was like, I shouldn't do this. I was like, ah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just do it. Um, but next time I would like to have just, just a little bit more thought, a little bit more structure and hopefully more than one person's opinion that is a part of the community. And, um, you know, hopefully that takes the, the conversation and the outcome somewhere. It's not about me. It's not about the success of my channel. It's about really trying to find a solution for the people who are really victims of the questions that aren't being asked. Um, I feel like had somebody asked questions sooner when it came to the seven-year-old who was victimized, uh, it had somebody asked questions sooner that it, it, it either wouldn't have happened or wouldn't have happened as long or whatever the case is. Um, so I, I, I don't mind fostering the discussion. I love to speak, even if it's a difficult conversation. Um, it's going to be difficult. And, and I know it is. And I'm up for the challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a conversationalist at heart. So I'm willing. And it might be difficult for me. I might get metaphorically slapped a couple of times. I might get something wrong when it comes to a community. But I'm willing. I'm willing to. I feel the like part, we're the only one that had it. Yeah. <laughs> so Nobody I'm, has had it. And, you know, and doing it in a respectful way, not in a way that's so, like, you know, rude, um, you know, and ridiculous. So I look forward to it. I thank you so much for being um, basically a friend of the show. Shoot, it's, it's, been two, it's, it's been two times you were a friend of the show at this point. <laughs> and I appreciate you for coming through and voicing your opinion, even, you know, despite your passion you know, last night and emotion. I know you felt like you were too emotional, but you weren't too emotional, in my opinion. I appreciate you. Thank you for what you do. No problem. You have a lovely night. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this evening's show up so y'all can go to bed. Thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <sighs> All right. I'm ready to go to bed, everyone. This has been an amazing show. I have really been enjoying opening up the phone lines for everyone, letting people call in and speak their piece as it pertains to Kevin Samuels or anything else that we discuss really. So hopefully you all are becoming comfortable and understanding the format that I present to you over here on the plain exchange and so that you understand how and why and when to call in when to click that link so that you are able to be a part of the live experience if you haven't already subscribed i'm not quite sure what you're waiting for you might want to hurry up and get on board with everyone else subscribe all right i'm always serving you up something that is trending it's recent it's happening right now my fingers on the pulse it is the best breaking black news and celebrity updates over here with your girl, the plainest Jane, okay? You also want to make sure you don't hesitate to hit the thumbs up button. That is also very crucial. It's very important. If you consider joining the membership, you are definitely in for a treat, all right? We are quite frequently backstage. Everyone else can't see this. It's just $1.99 to join the membership. But if you join the membership, we are backstage going on our social media strolls all the time, seeing what's going on in the world and giving you some uh, updates and really early access to the syrup before everyone else is able to see. I see that there's someone else who just joined the membership. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for joining. I really appreciate that. But yeah, we're backstage all the time. And if you want early access to some of the edited videos, some of the pre we got a Meg the Stallion update that's also backstage um, for all of the channel members, you want to make sure you check your members only community tab. There's always something going on. I haven't yet read the Meg and Tori transcripts to everyone in the public, but you know, backstage, y'all were privy to that. I think like two weeks ago, 
it was almost a long time ago. Um, so when you are a backstage sticky, right? You know, I call my subscribers stickies. You know that you get early access to all of the amazing stuff that I haven't rolled out to everyone else yet. So you are even more in the know than you are when you're just a regular free subscriber out here for everyone else. But listen, it is literally 3.30 in the morning. It's 3.30 in the morning. I have to, I gotta be to work sometime a little bit before 9 a.m. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm tired. I'm ready to lay back and chill a little bit. I hope that y'all have an amazing evening. What is today? It is technically Tuesday morning. So look, I hope that y'all have an amazing Tuesday. It's almost hump day. Don't let that coworker that be testing you to um, go over the edge. Don't let that coworker make you lose your job. Okay. But you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, and you take responsibility for yourself. Why is it that I feel bad when I play that clip too? It really sounds like it, it, it really sounds like she's upset with me. She's like, learn something from this. I'm like, damn, why haven't I learned? <laughs> learn something from this. I'm like, damn, I haven't learned. Let me find a lesson. She makes me feel bad. She's yelling so bad. Ty would really be mad in this clip. She really be mad in this clip. I, it makes me want to get myself together. God damn. That clip really gets me together. That's why I be playing it because it helps me keep myself in line with what I got going on. Nonetheless, listen, you all, be sure to tag me in your favorite trending topics on Twitter and on Instagram, more specifically on Twitter, because I'm always there causing some friendly chaos. Y'all know I am a proud representative of Black Twitter. I love you all so much. Make sure you comment down below. You don't want to hesitate. Um, let me know your thoughts on all the things that we discussed today with regards to Kevin Samuels, the 911 call, them dragon. Oprah, Gail King, Jerry Springer, Mari, everybody else is being dragged into the conversation. How do you feel about it? Is it warranted? Is it not warranted? Are they grasping for straws? Are they trying to make Kevin Samuels a little relevant based on that? Any and all comments, make sure y'all keep it sticking real with me down below in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for checking out the community tab. If you haven't already, there are some really good sticky notes with your motivational quotes and throwback pictures and just some funny stuff going on on the community tab. So you definitely want to make sure you check out the community tab, you like, you engage, you comment on some of those posts. And last but not least, make sure y'all subscribe and thumbs up or down either way. I appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. You know you want to hit that notification bell for an extra little razzle-dazzle, extra little something-something. And listen, y'all say beautiful black and blessings to the next video. Make sure y'all drop them pancake emojis down below. And you know I'm going to catch y'all later today. What is today? Tuesday? I'm going to catch y'all later today with some tea. Y'all know I can't let a day go past without getting y'all updated and sticky with the latest syrup so i'm gonna talk to y'all later today you definitely want to make sure you stay connected because some of the stuff that i might give you might be on the community tab and it might be live you just never know i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video deuces but that's it if you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen or i'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video i'll see you there